Cyborg brought you on because, uh, yeah, you had some a lot of great things to say on the Nethercast about uh, content. And um, <laughs> arguably, I would consider that probably the most important part of um, any video game for that matter, but Mortal Kombat 12 particularly. Um, I felt like since the Netherrealm era, we haven't really had that much uh, content in Mortal Kombat games. Right. So, uh, Mortal Kombat 9 had the, I mean, we had Crypt, uh, MKX, we had Jump Scares. So do you mean like, when you say content, you mean mm -hmm. like bonus content? Like just side games and stuff like that? Or do you mean just in general, like within the game, being packed filled with stuff? Pretty much what you said, just like packed filled with stuff. Like um, MKX and MK11, I felt weren't weren't full-fledged games i didn't feel like they were Hmm. um i mean they had the story mode they had the ladders and everything like that but i just didn't feel like it was um i didn't just i just didn't feel like it was a 60 dollars game and interesting wow uh yeah (laughs) Uh, well maybe i take that back i felt like it was a 60 dollars game i didn't feel like it was anything more than that Um, okay so uh how did you how did you feel about the the content outside of just the story mode? Oh man, outside of the story mode, I thought let's see with MKX we had each fighter had multiple variations which really added to like I don't I don't want to say replayability but just in general it it definitely felt like it had more to it than just a just like a standard move set even though mm-hmm. Obviously, I prefer the standard move set, but in terms of content, I'm trying to think what else MKX had. I'm, it's been a while. They had the team combat. They had online. They had King of the mm-hmm. Hill, mm-hmm. all that type of stuff. Um, they had the crypt. They had yeah, they had the crypt. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, outside of the story mode, I guess there wasn't really um, too much like bonus content or side modes, you know, like the old, old motor combat or puzzle combat or any of that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I... For me, I thought they were $60 games. I, I actually recently, on one of my recent videos, I think it was on like the the gameplay side of things mm-hmm. and talking about like the no variations and whatnot. I I said that I, I think they're always jam-packed because, I mean, you think of each character, they, they add multiple skins, they add mm-hmm. multiple animations and a pretty decent like combo system and moveset and... There's a lot of depth to the characters. I, I think they're oozing with personality in most cases. Um, they're not very like very shallow like it used to be. Mm-hmm. So when I think of like whether it's worth it, that's kind of what I think of. But I get where you're coming from in terms of not having any like conquest mode or something or mm-hmm. those types of things that you know keep keep you playing. Or um, I, I kind of like what they tried to do with the crypt in MK11, but. Yeah, when I when I'm yeah. when I mean content, it's kind of like <clears throat> I think uh, I I read somewhere that it's like the average lifespan of any video game, not just fighting games, but any video game is three months. That's hmm. like the average lifespan of a game, and it's like okay, what is in there to prolong that? Right, you know. So um, in MKX, uh, yeah, we had the team combat with in you know the the ladders. The crypt, um, which was pretty much just full of jump scares, and <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Mortal Kombat 11, they expanded on the crypt, which I thought was cool. Um, but where I thought it fell short was probably so I really liked the crypt in Mortal Kombat 11. I'll give them that. Okay. It was really I thought it was well done. The thing that really killed it was the random chess mm-hmm. yeah, there there was no sure. number chess you know right and that's one thing i didn't like and temp really did not like uh whether it's multiverse or um the time ladders he uh he didn't like that oh you have to be on at this time in order to get this skin or right. be on at this time to do yeah. this ladder to be at this skin and stuff like that so um it's like looking back at like 3d era mm-hmm. particularly deception in armageddon um there i i could have played that game i think i played that game for a year straight if i wasn't playing halo 2 hmm. 
Interesting. I, I I kept like you could play through conquest. You can do all the side quests. You can do the uh, you know, um, do the ladders, save up your coins to open up all the crypts. You know, all the coffins in the crypt. So right. that to me, it felt like a full fledged game. You know what I mean? So like moving on to MK12 with the Arrow Ring because I feel like we're kind of past that era of gaming. Mm -hmm. We're into the DLC like era of gaming live service games i think is what they call it yeah for sure yeah and um how do, so how do you feel that can be expanded into a mortal combat oh man well i mean when it comes to like a live service experience i think that can be a positive and a negative on the negative mm -hmm. side obviously then you're talking like battle passes and the things that basically can introduce fomo so when I've talked about like adding battle passes and stuff to Mortal Kombat and how I think that could be beneficial, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the pros. I'm thinking of the thing that keeps you from like keeps you wanting to come back and play more like constant mm -hmm. content being updated. You don't go more than a month or two without new content being updated. They usually, you know, refresh the game quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, like with like a Call of Duty or a, I mean, Halo's trying. Gosh. They're somebody try, helped that yeah somebody helped trying that game because it's yeah that was yeah. a mess from the get-go i mean was. as fun as halo infinite was for like the first month it's been nothing but trouble ever since um i'll give him that it but, was fun for a month yeah, yeah. Oh, i put like 200 hours within mm -hmm. that first month and like no joke um but after that all the problems really came to surface, yeah. but that's because they were not prepared for a live service game. And in addition to all the other things, I think mm -hmm. NetherRealm could do it. And that's like what I love about like battle passes and live service games is that, you know, when you're getting new content, there al there's mm -hmm. always a countdown of like mm -hmm. 55 days or 60 days. Like I said, usually two to three months. There's a countdown to when you know you can expect new content. There's no, like, secrecy. There's constant patches. You know, they'll put out almost, like, a patch every other week if they need to to fix something or to balance things out, you know, mm -hmm. to keep people happy, the things that are people are complaining about. They're putting out constant new store stuff, so there's always new stuff if... I mean, I guess when it comes to like a war zone, right, that's free or even Halo, that's free. So their mm -hmm. their store stuff is pretty pricey. You're looking at 15 to 20 dollars for most of their bundles. Um, but for like a Mortal Kombat, which is going to be a 60 dollar game, you could still do stuff like that. Just make the store bundles cheaper. I mean, mm -hmm. as long as it's worth their money and worth their time. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think it's just the steady stream of content that would keep me engaged and keep me interested so getting new stuff like new skins in the store every week, every day you could log on and see some new store items or whatever mm -hmm. that you're interested in playing. I think the main um, negative is you just you got to avoid the FOMO like Halo did it right where their battle passes stick around. You know, okay. you don't have to be on within that three month period mm -hmm. and get through 100 tiers you can take your time because that battle pass is always going to be there when you want it to be there. So when you're feeling like your passion as a your passion for playing is at a peak, mm -hmm. it'll be there for you. But when but when you're not interested in the game yet, you could miss a lot of stuff on like a typical battle pass like a Call of Duty. So, I also get uh, the complaints where people say it's pretty padded. I mean, mm -hmm. there's most of the stuff on like a Call of Duty battle pass I don't yeah. even care about. I'm just I'm doing it because I love playing the game. Like Warzone 1, I've probably put more time into than any game in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. So that's just the way it is. Probably since Halo 2, to be honest. Halo 2 or Halo 3. Mm -hmm. um, I put so much so yeah, hours see, into Halo 3. I, I totally right. feel that. So like, why So why did... You're, you're a fighting game player. Eh. Okay. <laughs> like our, you're a Mortal Kombat player, okay? So yes, I, I like Mortal Kombat. I okay. like Injustice. I like NetherRealm games to begin okay. with. Their their style of gameplay is some like I enjoy it. I okay. also enjoy like you know Soul Calibur and stuff, but I don't ever like those aren't games that I follow with a passion. And you mm. know what character is being revealed or this like there's no favorites. I like Sung Mina, but that's that's about it. Okay, like, this I'm not is interesting. Constantly... So I wouldn't even like mm -hmm. as a. I like fighting games. They're fun. I loved Bloody Roar back in the day and stuff mm -hmm. like that on the GameCube. And I've always, you know, been into MK. But I consider right. myself a Mortal Kombat fan. I don't consider myself necessarily a big fighting game fan. I don't go out and buy the new 
fighting game. Like when I think of a fighting game fan, mm-hmm. that's Temp. Temp to a T. Mm, yeah. Loves fighting games. I think he loves fighting games as a genre more than he loves Mortal Kombat. Like I think that takes oh, priority. 100 percent. Yeah, that's why he plays yeah. like all the new fighting games. Right. That's all of his uh all of his eggs are in the fighting game basket, whereas mm-hmm. my all of my eggs are in the Mortal Kombat basket. If people aren't enjoying Mortal Kombat, it's mm-hmm. not like I'm like, okay, well, I have that next fighting game to look forward to. I have the next Tekken or this or that. Yeah. No, if if I'm not having fun playing Mortal Kombat or uh-huh. it's just not fun just whatever about it, then I'm just gonna go back to my real passion, which is like I like first person shooters. That's and okay. it's not well, I wouldn't even say that. I like multiplayer first person shooters. Like mm-hmm. That's the fun experience to me. I like playing games with friends. I'm a social gamer to a T. Like, I don't do a whole lot of solo play these days. Mm-hmm. I will, I'm the type of person that's always asking, hey, you want to play Warzone? You want to play Warzone? You want to play Warzone? You want to play Halo? You want to do this? You want to do mm-hmm. that? I'm asking my friends to play games. I am never like just solo gaming. <laughs> yeah. So, this, okay, this is perfect. This whole dynamic just completely changed because I always looked at Cyborg as because you're in Mortal Kombat, you also liked mm-hmm. other fighting games. I, I, you know, I, I would always look on whenever I see that you're online on Discord, you're always playing like Modern Warfare, Halo, right. or something else. You were never playing. Eh, sometimes I'd see you playing Mortal Kombat, but you know, not very often. That's really- that's typically to uh, like record for a video. Yeah. <laughs> if you see me lately playing Mortal Kombat, yeah. it's just to record. Well, no, that's, I can't. I can't say that. I uh-huh. I recently started playing Mortal Kombat 11 again, like two weeks ago, uh-huh. with my friend, my like close friend for many years, who also is big into MK. He just doesn't like. He's not like us. He doesn't follow uh-huh. it like to a T. He's not going into Mortal Kombat communities and talking. He's more mm-hmm. just like, he'll see the latest news and then say, hey, did you see this? Like, yeah. that's his, his type of thing. But if we're if we're playing Mortal Kombat games, we're typically going bla- going back and playing like, you know, Ultimate yeah. MK3, that type of thing, so. Yeah, so I'm, I'm the balance between you and Temp. For, like, I, I'm a fighting game player, but sometimes you're, a lot of times, you're gonna see me online for two weeks straight playing League of Legends. Or you'll see you'll see me online for right. two two weeks or four weeks or whatever weeks straight playing Call of Duty, and that's what will happen. But then also it's like I'll get into the you know get back into fight. I always revert back. It's weird. Like right. I'll take a break, go for like two months of playing League mm-hmm. of Legends, and then I'll revert back to fighting games. In fact, after this, I think I'm um, uh, me and Temp were talking about playing Guilty Gear, um, so we're gonna go do that. But uh, um, but yeah, I so- go. In- this is great. no i was gonna say this is this is this is great this is really good because <laughs> how how is it you who's a mortal Kombat fan not a fighting game fan how is a mortal Kombat fan going to stay engaged into a into the next mortal mortal Kombat installment what is going to keep you in engaged into this game for three months for more than three months i should say you mean once it comes out? Yeah, so it comes it out. Doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't. I mean, it, the, 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 the answer based on history is it just doesn't happen. I right. mean, there's yeah. been jokes in the past, um, like leading up to MK11, that like I don't typically stick around for that long unless mm-hmm. they do something to get me to stick around. Once everybody decides they hate the latest game, I'm like, all right, I'm <laughs> on to other things because I'm not like... What, why does Razor hate this game and why are we not going to play it anymore? Well, it's not so yeah. much if Razor hates it. If Razor hates it, that's perfectly fine. He's going to hate it typically from like a, a storyline standpoint. That's I always say gag. that because I think but, he's probably the most critical, like sure. of, of the group. <laughs> but that was a joke. But, when, anyway. but if like if Temp starts hating the game and not wanting to play it, then I've just lost the the dude that I'm most interested in playing the game with. Typically, uh-huh. like. I mean, I could keep playing with down four, but down four just absolutely mops the floor with me nine times out of ten. So it's like <laughs> that's true. Temp is that's my guy true. because, yeah, Temp is typically my guy because he and I like he's just good enough to uh-huh. make it challenging, but not make it impossible. Whereas yeah. down four, I feel like is another level um, and usually gets to that point where I'm like, I stand no chance unless he starts saying back. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like he, letting uh, me win or something. <laughs> I think I played down four one time in MK11, and he he ten and owed me. So I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, this isn't even fun. Um, but yeah, it is. Um, no, down. Yeah, he's f- good. He is really good. He's uh, like a robot. Like I I look at like <clears throat> with temp. Like mm-hmm. when I think of temp as a player, mm-hmm. I can see the work 
that he's putting in to get like to where he is. I can, I can, like, I can feel him trying. Mm-hmm. Down four, I don't feel him trying. Down four is so good <laughs> that I feel like this is just so natural. Yeah. Like it's muscle uh-huh. memory to him. Like he's just going through the motions. That's how good he is. And yeah, him and yeah. Temp, you know, have super competitive matches. So I'm not mm-hmm. painting down four as like a league above Temp or anything. But that's just how it feels from my perspective when I'm facing the two. Mm-hmm. That's that's the vibe I get. Is just like right. They, it just feels like playing com- two completely different people. And it's uh, with down four specifically. It's kind of like I'd be I'd, I'd be like I'd be like, dude, your Shao Kahn is insane. Like how how long <laughs> did it take you to get there? And he'd be like, oh, I picked him up an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, that's no. This is this uh, this is great. This is great. Um, uh, but I, I do yeah. want to elaborate on that. So yeah, like, I, I want to know to me. What, what was ahead. that thing? No, what was it? Because you said, what is, unless, um, you know, what's going to keep you playing for, you know, post three months? I only say three months because, sure. like I said, that's the average. But you said, but you just said. Um, A I, multiplayer experience. Okay. I'll just cut to the chase. Okay. To me, and I've, and I've talked about this on, like, the Nethercast, is if uh-huh. you add in tag team, let's say, mm-hmm. that means... If I get bored or tired of the one versus one grind, because if I face somebody to a point where it's like, this guy just has my number, right? Mm-hmm. I can't, he's just that much better. And it's getting to a point like he's, 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 I, I, sh- small, very short tangent. I love, one of my favorite things about actually playing fighting games is I love the chase. I love how if I come up with a strategy that's being, a, that's effective against somebody. So if I figure out a way to throw temp off his game and I start pulling in wins against him, it's up mm-hmm. to him to adjust to that strategy, figure out a good counter to it, and then start throwing things that I struggle against. Mm-hmm. And that's it's that dance. That's what I love about yeah. fighting games, is that dance of, okay, I figured out a way to get around what you're doing, then mm-hmm. back and forth, back and forth. Like, that's super fun to me. My most fun playing fighting games is with, like, Temp, where we run, you know, set after set after set after set, and just grind out the same character matchup over and over and over, because then mm-hmm. I feel like, you really start to get your best. Um, you really start to hone in on those skills and figure out what works versus what doesn't. Okay. That aside, um, God, I forgot the original point. I'm sorry. Tag team. <laughs> Tag team. Okay. So yes. <laughs> so keeping me, <laughs> mm-hmm. keeping me engaged when I'm tired of grinding out a set with somebody because they have just excelled. That's why I won on that tangent when we're going back and forth, but it stops being a back and forth and somebody just starts to run away with it. Mm -hmm. To me, what would make that experience fresh again and fun again is if I can get two other people and now we can start doing tags or if temp and I grind out a one versus one set to hone our skills, then me and temp could go online and face other people online randomly like other Mm -hmm. tag duos Mm -hmm. and temp and i can be like we've honed our skills and now us as a team can put in the work that we've done together Mm -hmm. and face other people that's the type of player i am i love it's it's kind of like wrestling not like wwe style but like high school wrestling Mm -hmm. when you're high school wrestling or whatever amateur wrestling you are it's a one-on-one sport Right. But if you're playing a team sport like football or baseball, it's a team mentality. It's mm-hmm. all of us rallying together to get better so that way we can beat them. And to me, if I teamed up with Temp, that would be a whole nother experience or down four or whatever. Then mm-hmm. I can have fun with my friend. It's not at the expense of my friend's fun by beating him over and over. Mm-hmm. Or eventually I get salty because I'm being beat over and over and over to where it's no longer fun. Mm -hmm. We can team up together and go have fun together beating other people or losing, you know, whatever the case. That, to me, would keep me around. Just like other team mentality, other co-op aspects of the game. If they had a Shaolin Monk-style co-op game, Mm -hmm. I would be all about that. I love that. Um, So that's that's the answer to your question of that is one major, I think the biggest aspect of what would keep me engaged in a fighting game is having more ways to play than just 1v1. Give me 2v2. Give me 3v3. Hell, mm-hmm. bring back team combat from um, Mortal Kombat X where you had like five versus five and you do the round robin where mm-hmm. these five... Fa- now that we have like a big enough community where we could get, all get together and the mm-hmm. online's good enough, that would be so much fun to get 10 of us in one call and just have five on five round Robin. And then you're, you're hoping your team pulls through like yeah. that shit would be fun or run tournaments where right. 
actually have a built-in tournament system in the game, like you know UMK used to have, with you'd pick eight characters, do that on like a tournament online, mm-hmm. a custom lobby that you make with your community mm-hmm. online, and do a tournament all in one sitting of eight people all the way down to the final one, and you get to watch each other's matches. Because I enjoy watching my friends play, you know, and that yeah. type of stuff too. It is. Um, no, that's those are great, great ideas. And I, I can 100% agree because you can elaborate off of so many different avenues with that and everything. Right. I mean, you could do like, to, like you said, a two V two, um, you can have, you know, you and your friend, and then you, you know, you not lobby up, but what's called, you go into uh, you know, find a match and everything. Matchmaking. You, matchmaking. Thank you. Go to two V two with this one. And then, yeah, it's like, you can do, you know, like one player knocks, you know, both of you out or anything like that. But that was the fun. That was one of the funnest things about locals too. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to a locals or gone to mm-hmm. those, but nope. when you, when you go to locals, <laughs> some, some of the most funnest things you watch is watching your friends, you know, play against each other. And um, I think that's kind of the beauty of locals and why a lot of the uh, you know, fighting game community is all about it because they like meeting together and, and, you know, of course, playing against each other, but it's also the watching your friends, you know, oh, yeah. play as well. That, that's a major factor. Like when it mm-hmm. comes to like think Warzone, right? When you're mm-hmm. down and out and you're eliminated and you get to watch your friends and you're hoping they make it to the buy station to buy you back. Right. During that time, yeah. you get to see them make sick shots or you're getting super intense. Like, watch out. He's over there. He's over there. Watch that. Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're seeing him do like a sick shot and stay alive by the skin of their teeth or yeah. it's getting down to the, you know, final circle or whatever. And you're just rooting them on because mm-hmm. you're gone or something. Or even that in the ghoul yeah oh yeah that that's super hype so that mm-hmm. that should play a factor too in this is like if you had online tournaments where you could actually run the tournament from eight people all the way to one and it's an organized tournament in the game where mm-hmm. you could all watch each other's matches much like like back when it was team combat and mkx mm-hmm. you could see the life bars i don't think you could actually see the match but you saw the life bars going down so it'd get intense yeah. while your friends were uh playing each other or whatever uh yeah that kind of stuff that the the best thing they have right now for that is um, King of the Hill. But, I mean, King of the Hill, mm. the worst part about King of the Hill is if you get in a full lobby, which is what you want to do, right? You want to stack that thing right. up with a full community of people. There's always the one is, guy that's the best. Well, there's and always there's the a, one guy that's yeah. the best. In our, in our case, D4 would usually stay at the top or temp. Mm-hmm. But beyond that factor you're waiting eight matches to play again. Like that is way too long. I feel yeah. like to get back to where you get a play. I feel like if you had it, it it's just a fine balance, I guess mm-hmm. is where, where I'm going with that is I like sitting and waiting. It's just like, if I'm playing like PGA tour or 2k or whatever the latest golf game is mm-hmm. like, I, I don't want to play the, the versions they have these days where like all of you are golfing at the same time. And then you just go up and you see who did best on that hole. I want to be able to do my shot and have my friends watch me. Mm-hmm. And then I want to watch my friend's shot. Like it's no fun to just all do it at the same time. I want to be able to, and it's just a one player game at that point. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You're playing, you're all playing a one player game at the same time yeah. and then comparing like that's, that's not fun to me. I want to be able to like, bs with them and like Mm -hmm. mess up and you know or a great shot that was amazing or you you pulled it off like there's it's just part of the experience for me like like i said i'm all about multiplayer i'm a Mm -hmm. social gamer that's Mm -hmm. just how i am i've accepted it as much as i want to be like a hardcore gamer and don't get me wrong i'll play you know a crap ton of hours in a given week of like Mm -hmm. warzone or something so i wouldn't say i'm a casual gamer in that regard but I'm definitely a social gamer. I enjoy experience using video games to have fun with friends more right. so than I do to just unwind by myself. I mean, there are, there are those types of games. Like I, I like the Arkham games and there's been other games that have come along that, that mm-hmm. I've enjoyed one player, but, uh, but yeah, I'm definitely oh. enjoy experiencing <laughs> it as like a way to have fun with your friends and BS mm-hmm. and um, call back to those moments, make memories together type of thing. Yeah. And I, I can, I can attest to that too, is like, you know, there's the nethercast discord. There's also like breast discord as well, but it's like um, on my discord is actually like my real life friends that I grew up with. And one oh, yeah. of the, one of the hardest <clears throat> things I actually have is, is that, and I'm kind of like, I'm kind of envious of that dude they jump around from game to game to game but they're on for hours and hours and hours playing all <laughs> so, dude all sorts of different games it's like every time right. i log in and see that oh you know uh you know see that uh 
uh, CB is on, I'll see that Marco is on and I'll, I'll see that, you know, all the, um, or Marius is on and, and, and see all my friends on the, right. my real life friends and they're playing all these different games. And, um, and they're talking about, you know, oh, the new deck they that they may be playing a card game and the new deck that they build, or they're playing, you know, some kind of RPG game or whatever, like, um, uh, gosh, what was the vampire one there? Just, we, I played a little bit with them, uh, where you like build your castle, go collect resources. I have no idea. Uh, it, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, it, it was like Valheim with vampires. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, it was a fun game. I remember that, but anyway, um, uh, it, it's it's hard it's hard for me personally because it's like i have these kinds of fighting games that i like to play sure uh, i like to play my fighting games you know but also i like to play like league of legends and call of duty and you know um sometimes i'll play like apex legends or something like that but yeah apex was fun I yeah apex is super fun and i i think that's what you're hitting at is literally i think probably 95 to 99 percent of the people who play fighting games in general mostly mortal Kombat, because mortal Kombat is the mo is the the top sold fighting game um for the past three install or past two installments right and mkx and mk11 have sold more than any other fighting game mm -hmm. within within said in installments lifetime and um uh what i'm getting at here is that you know it's like you know how do you what can you do to keep people honed in? Cause for the most part, it's like, yeah, you have King of the Hill. Yeah. It's like, you can play with your friends, but it, it's not in the way that you can with call of duty, not in the way that you can with league of legends or halo, you know, and or Apex Fortnite Light. or yeah. I mean, yeah, any and, of these games, these days, game. the biggest, the biggest ones are the mm -hmm. ones that you can play with, you know, up to like three or four of your yeah. friends and have a party with it. Like, it, and that was the thing with league of legends too, is like, there is no single player content. It's you right. go online, you play against other people online competitively, mm -hmm. whether it's normals or ranked, you are still playing a competitive game, but it's five V five. It's always five V five. And they used to have a three V three when the game first came out, but you were still able to play with your right. friends, you know, which is like a huge key factor. So, um, it kind of makes me wonder why multiverses went down so fast um because it was That's a 2v2 yeah you know and i always wondered like why that game dropped off so fast I, I still am not quite sure um i hear a bunch of different things here and there on reddit and stuff but um i think i almost wonder if it is uh, because it's just a 2v2 like typically oh, there's 1v1 but oh, okay yeah i never yeah. got around to playing it it was one that i was wanting to play because i love smash uh but mm -hmm. like yeah it never just, it's just one of those that I asked my friends about and then it just mm -hmm. never materialized. So I just kind of yeah. fell it, through the if cracks. You go, if you go to a Smash Locals, by the way, um, mm -hmm. which they do um, where I live in, in Northern California, there's a, right. a huge Smash community. They love Smash Melee particularly. And they all get together and they'll have their tournament. But it's funny, while they're having their tournament, there's these side games where they're playing... Uh, like 2v2 or four right. person battle royales and sure. you don't see people doing like first to 10 1v1s on the side no they're all playing like battle royale or 2v2s yeah you know on the side and makes so, sense yeah. mm -hmm. and so going into mk12 like i i think the key the biggest key factor um two things uh is what you said is probably the most important one is the fact that you need to be able to play with your friends. Right. Like in a, in a co-op sort of way, not just playing against your friends. Yeah. You know? I, a co-op is huge. Being able to win together and lose together. When you lose together as a team, it really takes the sting off as much as just by yourself. I feel like, cause then you have somebody to kind of share in mm -hmm. that pain with but also like it's kind of like if you're going to work a crappy job it's better to work it with your friend because you can still kind of <laughs> yeah. bs around and you know lift each other up mm -hmm. um, and you can also rally behind each other and say you did good at this and we got it next time and so on and so forth so yeah i think um ask any I think veteran so yeah i think yeah. that's incredibly incredibly important so i think if mk12 doesn't have a tag mode or any sort of team mode I think that's a huge missed opportunity. Yeah. Just I, from that standpoint, I think they're they're limiting their 
And they're limiting their audience, limiting their audience. Granted, they're going to sell like crazy as it is. Uh, we know just on brand alone, mm-hmm. thankfully MK more than like a Tekken. Um, I think the reason why MK sells as much as it does and is one of the highest grossing fighting games <laughs> is because it's also casual friendly. It's not like a Tekken. It's not that Tekken isn't casual friendly. I just don't think it appeals to a non fighting game audience as much as Mortal Kombat does. Oh, like Tekken Mortal is Kombat, not a casual game. Right, no, Mortal it's Kombat's not. like the characters, the name brand, mm-hmm. just the iconic status of Mortal Kombat, its place in history, its pop culture, everything, mm-hmm. the movies. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's one of those things that it's not unlike Smash. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why Smash sells as well as it does, is because it's something that's, it's Mortal Kombat's also a party game in a lot of ways. Like, at, it, at its surface, it's also a party game because <laughs> yeah. you come over, you beat the crap out of each other, you do the fatalities, and you call it a day. You don't need mm-hmm. to go any further than that with Mortal Kombat to have mm-hmm. a good time. Even my friends who don't buy the games still look up the story mode to watch on YouTube because they're the most <laughs> casual yeah. of casual fans. Yeah. And they'll never buy the games because they don't love fighting games, mm-hmm. but they still are interested because they like the Mortal Kombat story. Yeah. That, that in itself shows you just like how big MK is. Mm-hmm. So no, that's very true. It's very true. It's it's embedded but, uh, into Western culture for sure. But yeah, so. I think it's a huge missed opportunity. And there's another benefit to like something like a tag or a team mode is that it means that if you're not the best player, you can still have a good time. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm if I am a casual player and i'm not like super great but i i can do okay Mm -hmm. i can always team with somebody like down four who is super good and us collectively it should base you know our both of our skill rankings against other people if we're doing like a ranked tag team or whatever so that way it's still a balanced fight but i can enjoy it because he can kind of carry me a little bit and we can still have a fun time. It's not all up to me whether I win or lose in Mm -hmm. that regard too. So there's also that aspect. Like if there was four of there's also the hardcore and I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's also like there's also like the hardcore. So say like down four and temp wanted to get together and do some kind of two V two, you know, Mm -hmm. tag team. Like that, I think that would be amazing if they had like a tag team ranked. Um, I'm a, I'm just a competitive person. So I find that the competitive aspect kind of satisfying. Sure. Yeah. I'm competitive as well. I definitely am. Yeah. And you have to be to play call of duty. Um, but, (laughs) but, well, I play um, Warzone. I don't necessarily play, uh, uh, Modern Warfare. I, I did well, try the beta of Modern Warfare and I enjoyed it, but I have yet to buy the actual game. I'm just playing yeah. Warzone because that's my yeah. that I, I love battle royales in general. Not like mm-hmm. I loved Apex, I loved PUBG, I mm-hmm. loved Warzone. So that's <laughs> to me, that's yeah. where my interest lies. I can have fun with even playing Fortnite. Me and my son play Fortnite sometimes. Sure. We have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. And, anyway, I could just see like down four and temp um getting together and actually like labbing out. 2v2 combos oh yeah oh you know? yeah i would do that i would totally do that i'm not yeah. against going into training and learning combos i did that with like yeah. a lot with frost i did that with a lot with katana and mkx mm-hmm. you kind of have to to be competitive at all is do some labbing yeah. and training i don't love doing that because it goes back to just playing a game by myself it means i'm mm-hmm. sitting there grinding things out for mm-hmm. Like I'll do it for like an hour, maybe two to, you know, really hone in. But mm-hmm. I like to do most of my learning like in the actual like in the actual game. I think if you spoke to Temp and asked him what's the best part about me in terms of fighting games, I he probably wouldn't say the combos or being like a master mm-hmm. combo guy or anything. It'd probably be more just like the footsies and the unpredictability. Like I'll do things that the most competitive player probably wouldn't do because they're too disciplined mm-hmm. and it'll throw like somebody like Temp off his game. But also, I, I feel like I have good like neutral and footsie game. Um, mm-hmm. I have pretty good reactions. Well, neutral um, and footsies is probably arguably one of the 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 most important aspect of of sure. oh, competitive scene. So it's yeah, fun. and especially with I mean, I'm like especially with Mortal Kombat 11 that has a lot more footsies based, you know, than MKX did. Right. Um, but yeah, like yeah. along with your point though about the labbing as a team, that would get me to lab if I knew that I could. Mm-hmm. my skills directly could improve our team and there's somebody counting on me yeah then i'm much more likely to push myself to do it and mm-hmm. get on together and do that because it's like i said it's just more of a, a 
a team, a, a group, a co-op experience, and I'm just mm -hmm. way more into that than just 1v1. Yeah, and the communication, and it was like, it, it'd be really cool to like have the headset on. Like I can I can just see it like 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 me and Gab Standard or me and Temp, you know, just sitting there just being like, oh, you yeah. know, he's doing his Kung Lao thing. He's gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna, hey, after the special, I'm gonna tag, I'm gonna, uh, after the special tag out to do a Katana fan or whatever, you know, or mm -hmm. you, you, I could, I could, Gosh, dude, that'd be some of the most that fun. Would, stuff. That would get me so stoked on this game. That would that yeah. stuff like that. Oh yeah, and might not even be Mortal Kombat 12, but it's like that kind of stuff gets <laughs> you so pumped for that for the game. You know that it's 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 stuff like that because like, has like, any other game done tag like that? I thought didn't Dragon Ball do that? Like where you could team with somebody else on the same team? Cause Dragon Ball mm -hmm. was a, yeah, like a three V three or two V two or something. Three V three. So could you team with somebody else online and face other people like mul a team of multiple people online? I, I, I would have to log back in again. Or did you have to again. be on the same console like you did for MK nine? No. Like to you, team with somebody. You can be online, but I think it was only versus the computer. Okay. I could be wrong. That's I could weird. be really wrong. Um, comment down below. Don't, don't persecute me yeah. for not knowing this. Um, <laughs> but I haven't um I, I need to play some Dragon Ball Fighters. I haven't played it in a while, especially because I was a uh I played Dragon Ball Fighters on D pad and I really want to play it on stick. Um, right. so I really want to log in log in and, and relearn the game on stick. Um right. anyway. Um yeah, so they did have stuff like that. And you know what's funny too is like a lot of the content creators um there was there was one and the reason i know i i think i know that answer to to if you can do that is because there was a content creator and i forget his name because i'd really like to give him a shout out because of how fun it was to watch it was mm -hmm. like it was like three idiots take on extra hard um that's what it was called it was like three idiots take on um extra hard mode uh, against the computer right and it was like three it was him and two of his friends and they would do they would you know do extra hard mode against the computer and it was like you know they'd have the 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 team of right, three right. it was so much fun and i remember there was this other kid right it was before um mortal kombat x came out um he was on twitch with his friend and they were beating the uh they're beating extra hard mode um of uh mk9 the the ladder extra hard mode on the ladder in tag team and they were just ripping with these combos like the most insane combos together and i remember watching that and i was like dude this looks so much fun like they, <laughs> yeah you know they were you know talking back and forth and communicating and um i remember it was like i think it was Liu kang and kung lao i'm pretty sure and they're on the shao Kahn part and they were having the hardest time defeating shao Kahn, right. and they were just you know uh, they weren't bantering, but they were just going back and forth being like, Oh, you dude, why'd you miss your special? Like I gave you an opportunity or yeah. like, Oh night, you know, it was, it, it just looked like so much fun, dude. They looked like they yeah. were just having a great time. I I've recently spoken to like down four as well as the mm -hmm. other guys on the nether cast to, cause I, I, I've done a lot of parsecing. Like I've mm -hmm. done it with like the recent WWE game and I've done it with several other games that are usually just one player experiences, but bringing people over and, and sharing it. I even got, I upgraded my uh, upload speed just to be able to do parsec <laughs> smoothly without any lag on their end. Um, but some... yeah, I recently spoke to all those guys mm -hmm. because I want to do MK nine tag, just like you're talking about either four of us, like all of us on the nether cast, like me, razor shad and temp get together for MK nine tag mm -hmm. where two of us face the other two, like mm -hmm. for the first time ever, that would be oh, a ton of fun. That or just like getting so like, much fun. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we're getting like down four and doing like the arcade ladders like you're talking about and going mm -hmm. through tag like that. Um, even just doing like the, I, I think down four and I did this. Uh, I don't think we ever finished it, but where you go through the challenge tower in MK9, mm -hmm. the the 300 whatever levels together, like just switching off, you know, each time. That would be fun. Like that, it just needs more ways to, to play like just that. Just together, you know what I mean? just playing, not just yep. playing together. Yep. Is, yeah, no, it that's I I hundred percent agree, one hundred percent agree with that. Um, yeah, and uh, um, I think it's I think in general, just fighting games in general are trying to head that direction. I don't know about Tekken, um, because Tekken Eight now not a lot has been said about the content in Tekken Eight because um, you know they've talked to just about the mechanics and the gameplay, but Street Fighter Six, they're all about like uh uh 
what's his name um nakiyama and matsumoto the, the the creators of street fighter 6 when they took over they're like we want to bring back the fun element that was in street fighter 2 you know it's like you remember being in the arcades and playing street fighter 2 and having so much fun with that right. and they want to bring back the fun element and i i appreciate that a lot because street fighter 5 had a horrible launch because it focused solo almost <laughs> I, entirely I yeah. I bought it. I bought it at launch <laughs> to play with like Temp and uh -huh. Down Four and all them. Like I, I had I, FOMO got me, and I'm like, all right, I'll buy. Yeah. Even though I'm not the biggest Street Fighter fan, I don't hate it or anything, but I don't yeah. like I don't attach myself to any characters like I do with Mortal Kombat or Injustice, mm -hmm. etc. So I'm like, I'll buy it. It looks like fun. So I bought it day one. And yeah, man, bare yeah. bones as could be. <laughs> I, uh, I I love Street Fighter. Um, I would, I'll, uh, I'll admit I am more of a street fighter. I like street fighter more than mortal Kombat. Um, game... All right, you know, I think I got to go do something. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, ga gameplay wise. If you let me finish <laughs> <laughs> um, game, um, gameplay wise, but I will always revert back to mortal Kombat. It's right. It, it's the first, it was there. Um, it will, it's been there since 1995. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2 yeah. straw hat pizza like yeah I've like nice. I can always revert back to Mortal Kombat it's it's it will always be there but um uh but yeah it's like they're 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 reverting back to I've, I've noticed two things they've noticed um uh a lot of games a lot of fighting games particularly are reverting back to the fun element and less of the competitive element right because I think they started to realize like, Hey, we, you know, we, we need to bring more of an audience in. we can't just be competitive all the time. Um, and, uh, so I think that's what, uh, the developers of street fighter six were talking about. And they have all these games that you can do that like also trick you into like learning how to play the game better. They have, mm -hmm. they have their own conquest mode in, um, in the campaign mode where you just explore Metro city. And right. then, um, Tom and Tony Cannon, the create the uh, the lead developers behind Project L with the Riot Games fighting game, um, they haven't said anything particularly about the content of the game, but they have made it very clear that they want this to be a game um, that new players can enjoy as well. People that have never played fighting games. Now, if it's a Riot game, of course that's going to bring in a lot of people who've never played fighting games because the, mm -hmm. all they all they know is league of legends and legends of runeterra their 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 card right. game but mortal kombat has a you know they have that that brand so right the next mortal kombat that comes in i really want to see them not only are they going to kill it in sales that's just a given they're going to kill sure. it in yeah. sales but to keep people going and to keep people you know playing the game and to be able to play with your friends again and have fun again rather than just story and ranked you know it's story mm -hmm. and online and that's it there is you know so um i really want to see that absolutely but, yeah you know, um the other thing uh is because we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier was um you know we talked a little bit about dlc um I uh, particularly, I did not like the gear system in MK11. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, <that's... laughs> I, I thought it was kind of cool. You got to customize a little bit, but that was the thing. Um, I always, uh, I, I, I like unlocking costumes, but even more so, um, I'm a huge fan of the way that Riot Games uh, does skins with League of Legends mm -hmm. because. Um, at first when the game came out, it was like a new character came out with two with a with a base skin and a secondary skin. And then they would sometimes, you know, release every one or two months, they release a new skin with a character that you could buy. And now it's like they have seasons. And um, within those seasons, now they have like six different costumes for like six different characters. Now, note that there's 162 characters in the game. So there's a lot to keep up with. Right. With MK12, I feel if Ed Boon is, you know, going to stand by the whole like supporting the game for a lot longer. Um, mm. 
<laughs> I know. He said we're going to support him. We're going to support MK11 longer than we have before. And then he said in M the next installment, we're going to support for even longer than that. Um, right. According to his tweet. Right. right. I, I like your idea of battle passes. <laughs> I like the idea of continual DLC. Right. I, I like my unlocks. I like to I like to unlock things in the game, which is great. But I, I, I like to keep going with the DLC. I, I would be totally fine. In fact, I would love it if like each character had 10 skins that you mm -hmm. had to purchase, you know, rather sure. than just gear. Because in MK11, it was pretty much what four skins with like eight different color schemes. Right. You know what I mean? Um uh, how do you how do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, like continually adding skins for purchase and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think it just needs to be one. You can't have you can't take away from the base game as it is. As long as you make sure mm -hmm. that you're giving people their sixty dollars out of the gate, because it's going to be a sixty dollar game, if not seventy dollars. I think um, seventy is the new standard. <clears throat> That's what I'm yeah. saying. So, yeah. like, as long as it's you make people feel like they've gotten a good value for a full price game, mm -hmm. as long as that's the case, and people aren't saying, "Well, you took no, you you took those skins," you know, they were on, they were going to be included, but now you're making them DLC and you're making me pay more. As long as you don't have, I mean, there's going to be people that do that anyways. Mm -hmm. But like, as long as you minimize that by making sure it's very apparent and you have a great value with the base game itself. I have absolutely no problem with them adding additional skins as DLC and continually doing that. Like, like you said, upwards of 10 additional skins or every week there's a new character skin in the shop or a, another couple character skins mm -hmm. in the shop, whatever. The only other thought is it needs to be priced well. It can't be mm -hmm. priced aggressively. Otherwise, you're really going to piss people off. And none of this shenanigans that companies like to do these days where they... <laughs> I already know they, you know start, this. they start off being a, yeah. as obnoxious as possible knowing uh -huh. there's going to be backlash regardless so rather than just be you know two dollars per skin out of the gate which people might complain with anyways uh -huh. and then they'll have to knock it down to a dollar they'll start with five dollars per skin mm -hmm. and then knowing that you're going to do backlash then they can lower it to their originally intended two dollars anyways but then they can say well we've listened to your feedback we hear you we'll just lower it to two dollars and now you as a customer have been fooled into feeling like mm -hmm. you've gotten now what you want even though it's already still at a price that maybe you didn't feel was fair had they led with that to begin with companies do this all the damn time yeah and i could easily see that being the case <laughs> Um, whether five dollars is too much is for a skin, I don't know. I, I think five dollars is fair. I think ten. So here's what League of Legends does. This is what they initially did at first. Um, not so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, they still do it. Actually, I take that back. When uh, when a skin is released, it was nine hundred and seventy five riot points. So that's currency that you have to buy. Sure. With, yeah, everybody's got their currency system for right. sure. Yeah. So there was influence points and riot points, right? And influence points is a currency you earn in the game. You can buy characters with it, but you can also use riot points to buy characters as well. But skins, you only could use riot points, right? right. Well, what they would do is, oh, you can pay $5 for 600, or what was it? It was like 650 riot points for five dollars or you can buy um it was 1050 riot points for ten dollars or uh, right yeah or, usually they give you a discount the more you buy the more sure. you buy right but your yep. skin is 975 so yeah. it's like why can't i just buy five dollars why yeah, can't it's... You that's know? that's the way they do it. It's just like it's Halo Infinite. Right in between. They, yeah. they sell things for 800 credits, but you can't buy just 800 credits. You either buy 500 credits, which is $5, or you buy 1,000 credits for $10. So mm -hmm. an 800 credit item means you have to spend $10 to even be able to buy that to begin with. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's just the nature of the beast. <laughs> now, whether $5 is fair per skin, I'd say no. Because, I mean, you think of like... Typically in a season, even for Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. $20 usually got us, what, four characters? And those characters included skins, the whole mm -hmm. moveset, all the animations, all the voiceover work. 
their story endings, everything for those characters. Mm-hmm. It was twenty dollars. Then they upped it to twenty five or whatever. You know, it's grown over the years, inflation and all that fun stuff. Plus, it's just more to make games these days. So that I completely understand, and mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with. That being said, five dollars for a single skin, probably not. I think that that's probably. That's extreme. I, I look at it as a, a reasonable price for a skin was pro- would probably be two dollars. Now they're probably okay. not going to sell it for just two dollars. They'll usually bundle it with three other skins, whether you want them or not, for five dollars mm-hmm. or something. So you get four skins for five dollars. I think that's usually like l- looking up Mortal Kombat Eleven. Man, I I don't know. I I could pull it up on Steam real quick, but I'm pretty sure it's like five dollars for four skins. Last I checked. Okay. So, yeah, I wouldn't think $5 per skin. Now, you know, with Call of Duty, you pay like $20 for, you know, an operator skin and then a bunch of emblems and stuff that you don't necessarily want or, you know, some gun skins, maybe Mm -hmm. one of them, which is cool. And the rest of the stuff is just filler (laughs) garbage. That stuff. I mean, I don't even use that gun. (laughs) Like, yeah, yeah, that's that's typical stuff. But yeah, Yeah. still, as it is, I I don't want to. I don't think $5 would be a good mm-hmm. price for a skin personally. So how do you feel about, because you mentioned battle passes earlier. Now that now we're going cross genres. Sorry, so, I don't want to interrupt you. I did no, look go it ahead. up. Okay. So Mortal Kombat 11 combat pack two was $15. At least it is now. It doesn't say it's at a discount. So that's okay. three characters for $5 each basically. Okay. So yeah, you can't charge a skin for something that you're usually getting the entire character and everything mm-hmm. that comes with them. Right. Like the uh the matinee skin pack which comes with it looks like three yeah, three new character skins. Those three skins in total are $6 for the bundle. Okay. Same with the Elseworld skin pack, so it looks like my $2 per skin is accurate. So unless that goes up for some reason, which I don't think it should Mm -hmm. but yeah i I don't think that would be a bit of a jump five dollars per skin gosh i would hate it if they did like points and stuff like like i understand that if you're going to make a skin pack or skins and stuff like once a month a a new skin you know it's like in every month for i mean that's a lot of skins over the course of like a a four-year game you know right but, that's why you got to keep them reasonably priced too okay. and also the difference between i don't know about league of legends but the difference between like mortal Kombat and mm-hmm. like warzone or fortnite or apex all of mm-hmm. those are free games you know all of this those is very Battle Royals, true yeah even though modern warfare still sells its campaign and multiplayer for 60 dollars, same with halo yeah. sold its campaign for 60 dollars. which mm-hmm. i love i mean i liked Halo Infinite's campaign, but it was not worth sixty dollars. <laughs> it should have been like thirty dollars. Yeah. But anyways, didn't they try those to do like some all... kind of open world thing or something like that? Like, yeah, I thought yeah. it was fun, but yeah, okay. not worth sixty. But anyways, those are all free to play games, so mm-hmm. or at least their multiplayers are. So I mm-hmm. think they can get away with the uh, charging twenty dollars for a bundle or ten dollars for a bundle or fifteen or whatever. Whereas Mortal Kombat, since it's asking that sixty or seventy dollars, I don't think they can up the price so so dang much i think it still needs to be kept reasonable they still need to be microtransactions after all when you get yeah. to selling them for five to ten dollars each you're looking at macro transactions yeah, so let's it, let's keep it two dollars per a skin five dollars per character if they mm-hmm. up it by 50 cents or a dollar whatever you know that's one thing but mm-hmm. doubling or you know almost two two and a half times the price yeah. that they've been asking is probably a bit egregious because i understand the element of a business i mean they do 100 sure. percent have to make money but at the same oh, yeah. time it's like you are right it's like you're paying 70 dollars for the base game and then you go in there and you're like okay i'm gonna get this as long as it, you're right as long as it doesn't take away from you playing the game if i paid 70 dollars for the game sure i won't be able to get the skin unless i purchase it but i can still play the game and still have fun oh yeah you know so i yeah. understand that and two dollars i had 250 two dollars i think is fair that's pretty oh yeah that's pretty accurate um it's jump change i mean i know people yeah. complain about it regardless so at least there will be yeah. that um subsect of fans or consumers right. that will always hate dlc in any facet mm-hmm. um and think everything should just be given to them for free not realizing that all this takes money and effort and time to make yeah. from the company that's making them but that being said yeah as long as it's kept reasonable i mm-hmm. mean 250 Two dollars and fifty cents. Either you have it or you don't. If you don't, then don't spend that money on that. But mm-hmm. to me, 
that's like these days that's like a third of a meal like you could eat a, you could go to <laughs> yeah. taco bell save yourself a couple of dollars uh-huh. and then there you go buy the skin you want that's, deli- yeah or eat ramen for a night if it's really the budget's really that Damn. tight eat ramen for a night and you've made up that money basically so yeah it's like what 45 cents for a pack of ramen or something like that yeah when it's I... yeah when you're talking about a <laughs> cup of coffee uh-huh. is is what we're talking about for a purchased amount i think it's still reasonable yeah i i agree with that one um so uh going cross cross genre what i was getting to was was battle passes you mentioned battle mm-hmm. passes how cool that would be i think boone did say that he wanted to do like battle passes for mk11 if done right yeah if done but i don't i don't know if that was uh, obviously it was never implemented um right. but for battle passes uh how how would that be implemented into mk because it works really well with mortal Kombat or not mortal Kombat. i'm sorry with call of duty i think it actually works really well with league of legends because mm-hmm. if you do purchase the battle passes not only do you get um uh pretty much what you're doing is when you purchase a battle pass you're also purchasing the ability to gain m- more um you're you're going to be getting some uh um uh, like you're pretty much purchasing like a bunch of loot boxes and and some 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 icons and some borders and stuff. You're getting a lot of stuff. You are getting a lot of stuff, but you're some, also you're, go ahead. Oh, so you're also getting the ability to earn a different in-game currency, like right. really fast. And that yep. in-game currency you can use to buy uh uh like really cool skins yep. that you can only get with this currency. And it's it's really it's really unique and I really like it. And the um it's really cool because it's like, oh, for this battle pass, it's like or for this season, it's gonna be of the battle pass, not the actual season. And we can right. get that I wanted to get that in a bit because um I I've uh I've a little bit to say about the uh um the Mortal Kombat uh seasons. Um mm-hmm. but uh when you look at it you're like oh the the you know the misfortune um uh I forgot what they're called. I don't want to say legacy but whatever it's called the uh the the misfortune skin is going to be out or the RE skin or whatever is for this season it's it's out and you can buy it with this currency so it's like you kind of have an incentive to buy it and like earn your right. way there. So I actually really like the way it's done. Um but yeah. ha- but how would that how how would that work in a in a in a Mortal Kombat game? See that's yeah. tough. So <clears throat> I think there's some key factors to making a battle pass enjoyable. One thing is if you do not like playing the game, then a battle pass is not going to be for you. Right. If there's other games that you'd rather play, the battle pass is not going to be for you. The thing the mm-hmm. I enjoy battle passes most for the games that I am actively obsessed with playing Mm -hmm. like Warzone, i have no problem finishing most of the battle passes because Mm -hmm. i just play that often so when i was really into rocket league i had no problem finishing a rocket league battle pass so if you don't have my thought is is if a is if you don't enjoy playing the game enough to complete a battle pass then that that's the complaint i see Mm-hmm. then maybe it doesn't really matter if you miss out on that content. If you don't enjoy playing the game that much, then who cares if you miss some content, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there is the FOMO aspect of, like, let's say I get really busy during that three-month period. Let's mm-hmm. say, you know, it's the holidays or this or that. You mm-hmm. know, you don't want to feel like you have to log on, play a certain amount of time, or miss that content. So here's the thing. So... The things I love about battle passes are one, you can always buy your way through that battle pass. Mm -hmm. You can, you just can. Like if you are the type of person that has an excess amount of money, I've never done it. I've never bought my way through a battle pass ever, Mm -hmm. but let's just say you have a lot of money at your disposal to throw around. You can still buy your way. So if you don't want to spend your time, just Mm -hmm. buy until you get whatever you need Two. Battle passes don't have like such amazing content typically that if you miss out on it, mm-hmm. you're going to be super bummed. Yeah, there's a lot of filler in those. And maybe the end content is something you really want. And maybe let's just say they throw that in the store by itself for a higher price. Let's say you can buy a battle pass for typically $10. That's mm-hmm. usually what like Call of Duty and Halo, those battle passes all cost. Mm-hmm. So let's say that end item that you get at the end of a battle pass rather than have that go away forever let's just say that comes around in the store after the fact after the battle pass has expired that comes out in the store for just 10 bucks 
Mm -hmm. So you can pay to get everything in the battle pass while you're around. You're playing the game. You finish the battle pass, you get that. Plus, you get mm -hmm. all your coins back. That's the main thing about battle passes, and we'll get to that. But if you miss out on that end item that you really wanted, so future seasons, you're looking back at past seasons, and, oh, damn it, I, I, I missed out on that item. I mm -hmm. really want that. that. That should be in the store. Why mm -hmm. not? Charge people a premium for it, but if they really want it, at least they have the opportunity. It's not FOMO. You still have the opportunity to purchase it at a premium. So I mm -hmm. think that is one crucial detail that I think could make a lot of people happy that are worried about not being able to finish something like that in time. Number two is getting your currency back. I'm a big fan of saying that a game should, like, you can give, if you're giving a game a lot of your time, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't have to pay a lot of money on top of it. If you're paying money towards the game, you shouldn't have to give it a lot of time. There can mm -hmm. be a balance there, so everybody's happy. Um, so where battle passes come into play is even if you don't even purchase the battle pass usually the all the ones i've seen all give you currency mm -hmm. a certain amount of currency for free just mm -hmm. by completing the the free tiers of the battle pass usually you get like 300 or whatever you know like a third of a battle pass cost just by completing it without spending a dime so mm -hmm. that way if you complete enough of them just the free versions, you'll have enough to buy a battle pass. And the wonderful thing about a battle pass is if you complete it, it pays for itself and then some. Like Call of Duty does it. You pay $10, you get $13 essentially back in COD points if you mm -hmm. complete it. So that means you have the $10 to buy the next one. So if you buy the first one and never fail to complete a battle pass mm -hmm. you'll always perpetually be able to get the next one with the amount that you earn from the first one you'll never have to pay more than ten dollars so not only did you put your money but you also put the significant amount of time into it right and so you basically like earned it back by doing absolutely okay. and then some because then you uh -huh. get the additional three dollars and rocket league did it this way as well mm -hmm. then you get the additional three extra three dollars or 300 cod points on top of it mm -hmm. so that way if you play enough you not only are going to be able to get all the battle passes without paying more than that initial Initial ten dollars, but you'll also get enough to then purchase something from the store to add on to it. So let's say let's say Mortal Kombat gave you thirteen hundred coins back. You'd get mm -hmm. the ten dollars worth to put towards the next battle pass, mm -hmm. and you'd have the three hundred to go buy yourself an extra fun skin that was in the store. Like that's yeah. how it should be. Right. That's that's an ideal battle pass in my opinion. And if you want to be extra special and you want to be extra cool. Do it like Halo does it and have the battle pass never expire. Now you can only work towards one battle pass at a time, so you mm -hmm. can't just wait for 10 of them to save up and then you play one battle pass worth amount of time and complete all 10 of them in one go. You do have to do it one by one because that's just how they do it. But that's the give and take. I mean, it's all give and take and working with these companies that need your time, that need your money, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. It's all about finding that balance of what makes me happy as a consumer and as a player that you're not encroaching upon my enjoyment of this game, mm -hmm. but also makes you happy as the person that's shelling out a crap ton of money to pay all these people to make this game and to advertise this game and to make it what it is these days to keep it going in this mm -hmm. sort of economy and so on and so forth. Like it's a give and take. That's just the way of the world these days. Right. So it's a matter of making both people happy without feeling like the other one is screwing over the other. Yeah. That's... Um beyond go ahead. No, go ahead. Go, you can... no, what were you gonna say? Beyond I was just gonna say beyond that, um mm -hmm. what you need for a battle pass is just provide enough content to keep you engaged and keep you happy as a player. Mm -hmm. Um obviously not all of it's gonna be super killer awesome content, but I love like having battle passes all be a theme. Mm -hmm. I love roadmaps coming out ahead of the battle passes, usually mm -hmm. Um, like I like halfway points, like halfway through the season, they'll refresh, yeah. you know, with some new gameplay changes and new some they'll release maybe. So if Mortal Kombat does a battle pass, because that's the topic at hand. Mm -hmm. So let's say they do it two months or a three month battle pass. Then they should be putting a counter. So you always know a countdown time of how much you have left and then how mm -hmm. much you got to wait till new content comes around. Mm -hmm. Halfway point, they should put out free updates for the game, including free skins to get you to come back and maybe a free arena or something like, mm -hmm. you know, how COD will update the map or whatever, that yeah. type of stuff. So maybe they put out a couple free skins and a free arena to bring people back to come check it out. Um, 
Hey, and, and are you listening to this? I mean, I, I think I found your your business market. <laughs> I think I found your guy. And then, <laughs> and then yeah, just have a roadmap because that's yeah, how you yeah, get yeah. people hyped and be uh -huh. like, okay, if you stick around or let's just say you do want to take a break, this is what you have to look forward to and when. Transparency goes a long way with players. That's the word the, one right of the there. Most, one of the most frustrating aspects. Uh -huh. one, one of the most frustrating things about being a Mortal Kombat fan over mm -hmm. all these years is there there has been a very big lack of transparency either because of nrs or wb or whoever's making these calls mm -hmm. probably a little bit of both but probably mainly wb there's been a very lack of um transparency mm -hmm. of people not knowing what they're getting not knowing the characters or what's when to expect anything or if there even is going to be anything else they they like to drag yeah. their feet on uh whether there's whether this is the end of the content for this game or whether there's going to be more they like to play coy about it um mm -hmm. likely because they're being told to and i just think that's a bad strategy i like transparency and no like roadmaps are what people do these days so i'd like to see that too yeah i i 100 agree i'm trying to find this name here and i'm really really sorry um uh <clears throat> Yeah, it's I I would hundred percent agree with that because um, well, while I, you look for that, if you look for that, I can uh -huh. say one more aspect of like battle passes that I really like is okay. themes. Themes to battle passes is fun. Those 100%. are fun. I like one hundred one hundred percent agree. Season with that. one Outworld. Everything's yeah. Outworld themed. A new mm -hmm. Outworld map, like or not map, arena set in Outworld that comes mm -hmm. for free. New skins for Outworld characters. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in Conquest, if they have that, they expand Conquest with a new Outworld section or whatever that you got to come check out. Mm -hmm. Maybe Outworld player car, you know, icons for your player. Car. Everything's Outworld themed about the thing. The main menu changes. All the UI is updated for this season to mm -hmm. be all Outworld. Then number, you know, season two is Earthrealm. Season three is Chaos. You know, yeah. themes. Themes for your seasons. Those are fun. Just like celebrating holidays is fun. Give us mm -hmm. holiday skins for the characters. Give us, celebrate the new Bro. WB movie coming out with uh, a free this, a free that. You can't go wrong with free because even if, even if people don't like it, Mm -hmm. who cares it's free like and just, I, I can attest to that matters. i can attest to that 100 percent. first off league of legends does do that and they do it really well like valentine's day is coming out they just released this new skin and uh they always release new skins for valentine's day they always do like christmas and holiday skins and themes and stuff like that and um uh i played destiny for a long time i was a huge destiny player and uh destiny one and destiny two and uh still to this day i will always return for the dawning event during yeah. christmas time every year yep. i will re-download destiny and i will always return to the dawning because i really like the christmas theme i really like walking around the tower it's it's beautiful it's snowy sure. with all the lights and it's stuff. fun it is yeah. and um gosh i wish they brought back sparrow racing i know why they're not but um i don't know if you know what that is but it was so much fun anyway um i don't um but like mm -hmm. taking this to mk like yeah say around like christmas time or hanukkah or kwanzaa i don't want to leave out the other holidays but like during yeah. the winter holidays mm -hmm. release an arena that has a new snow theme to it so take yeah. the courtyard and it's all snowy all over the yeah. place in that arena and keep that arena or even make it a limited time arena so if you want to check out the arena in snow mm -hmm. you better get on and come like i don't want to get into fomo either though so i, I gotta well, be careful with that. i'd like, love it to stick around but during the combo breaker they would have like one of the you know they would have their competitive stage and put combo breaker on there exactly or Evo, you know they they exactly. can do that um, yeah but uh, uh the dawning specifically because you said you didn't want to you you want to represent like overwatch from all did this the kind holidays. of stuff too yeah well the dawning, rocket league yeah. yeah they all did it but i mean either way it's like it's a winter themed but the sure. dawning they actually said specifically they're like it's the culmination of all the different cultures and religions and all the different right you know and the and we we call it the dawning because it's 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 all the different um uh, winter celebrations from all the different aspects of humanity so i right. thought that was really cool and um but anyway i'll return to that and um tom cannon uh said in one of the project l updates it's like we want to be really respectful of your time and your wallet that if you just <laughs> if you needed to step away from right. project l 
that when you came back, you weren't, you're exactly what you were just saying. They were like, if right. you needed to step away, or maybe you didn't have fun anymore. And then you came back. It's like, we're here to welcome you back. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're here for you to, you know, to come back into the game and stuff. So, um, because, you know, like you said, people get busy. Like you took some time off from Mortal Kombat too. And you were just like, <laughs> I had to play Mortal Kombat 11 <laughs> after this past two weeks when I, when I yeah. returned to it with a friend, I hadn't played it since Nethercast did their, like Django and Temp did their tourney thing. And that uh -huh. was 2020 late 2019 or early 2020 <laughs> something like that so yeah it's been it's been, yeah, it's been at least while. three years since i played the game <laughs> dang dude yeah exactly so <laughs> i swear yeah. i'm a mortal Kombat fan <laughs> <laughs> you're like i'm a mortal. what's the last time you played oh three years ago um <laughs> yeah but, it goes back to yeah uh -huh. just yeah but it's like you know people like uh return i remember um I remember watching Maximilian's uh, uh, one of his um, streams, and he went back to Mortal Kombat Nine. It was for it was to I think it was like to do like a Mortal Kombat X, um, uh, getting ready for that game. And he went back to play Mortal Kombat Nine, and he was just like super rusty. And <laughs> he was just like, yeah. "Oh, what? What?" He's like, "Oh crap! What was this? What was this combo?" It was really funny and everything. And but it's you know it's um uh. But yeah, it's I, like, I like that. And I think Boone is doing the best he can with the transparency. But with Street Fighter Six and Tekken, it was it was really cool to see Nakayama Matsumoto and Harada, uh, the, uh, uh, the developer for Tekken. Right. It, at the Game Awards, not only did we receive a full trailer, they straight up did a half hour segment afterwards where they're like, oh, we want to make the game more aggressive. Here's the new mechanics for the game. It was like all the things. And then yeah. Street Fighter Six did. They were like, OK, here's a new uh, gameplay trailer with some new characters. And then they recently did uh, a new gameplay trailer as well. But they're like, oh, we're going to do all this stuff and then we're going to add this in. And then you're going to be able to you know, go through Metro City. You're going to play these little games like it was so refreshing to see so much transparency from developers because they weren't just like you know doing the whole dangling of the carrot thing where yeah. they're you know they're the word oh you know, boy i mean no offense <clears throat> no, no offense to anybody who's done this but it's like we're gonna make a 10 minute content create a content creator make a 10 minute video off of a 12 second <laughs> oh my gosh video yeah. that ed, oh. ed boone put out a little teaser trailer you know so it's like it's yeah, sometimes I feel like the Joker when I'm like, this town needs a better class of content creator, and I'm going to give it to them. <laughs> but yeah, I, I try not to be smirch it's other content them. creators. No. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's definitely, there, there are definitely people that mm -hmm. go after the low-hanging fruit and try and milk that for everything it's worth, or just yeah. be... I want to yeah. crap on the content creators a little too, you know, too much, but it's, the, <laughs> That's fine. you know, but <laughs> it's not the point I was getting at. We're not the, naming names, so it's cool. <laughs> the point was, is just like it, it, for a long time, Mortal Kombat has had that like low hanging fruit. And, um, but Mortal Kombat has also been the one franchise that has really, that has Starved actually. Starved people. It starved people, but it is also answered to them. I can look back at like, shoot ermac is based off of error macro and, right oh yeah oh they're great at like actually you know, paying attention to what the fans are saying there, or, there's yeah or scarlet's that, based off of mortal kombat two or three i forgot which two, one i think it was yeah, yeah and it was like they accidentally did something it was uh, i forgot and they're like oh who's this new character it's scarlet and one fan made this fan video this fan made thing where it was actually a complete fake and i don't know it, yeah. was, it was something like that but it was like side side mention mm -hmm. just because you mentioned oh it's scarlet like it, if you go back and watch when we were at um the mortal kombat 11 reveal event Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite part of that reveal trailer that I recorded. And I put it up on our channel of like mm -hmm. me recording on my phone, my crappy, I think it was like iPhone four at the time or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And then they're playing the, in the worst camera work you've ever seen, because I'm like <laughs> only recording half the screen because I'm just like busy trying to watch it too. And uh -huh. just enjoy the moment. I know well, anyways, so. Scarlett's doing it and she's doing her fatality and you can hear somebody behind me and behind me was brusque. And uh, I can't remember. I think, I think it was like Brusque and Razor and maybe okay. 
somebody else i can't remember but somebody you could hear somebody scream in the video like who is that bro as she doing her fatality and then right as she plunges the blood sick or like the blood spike into their face or whatever uh-huh. you hear him go it's scarlet like at, it's like the timing on it i don't know as a video maker and as an artist just the timing of <laughs> you the could blood have asked for a better going into the person yeah. as somebody saying it's scarlet and this is coming <laughs> and you can hear it above everybody uh-huh. else screaming and going crazy I, that's just my favorite moment in that entire awesome. presentation and that video because of some random person wondering who the hell that was because they didn't recognize her and somebody yelling it's mm-hmm. scarlet I wonder That's if that awesome. was Brusque or somebody. I don't know. I never asked them, but they they were sitting right next <laughs> behind me, so it could have been. But yeah, I, I, I can don't know. see Just another aside that. because it's I Scarlet. I recently watched that video. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That was good stuff. Yeah, but anyway, uh, I think uh, uh, I think you know Boone. I, I always say like Boone and and Vogel and and or Vogel Vogel. I think it's Vogel. Vogel. Yeah, Vogel. Vogel. Yeah, it's John like, Vogel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and, you know, they've always been, like, really good about that because, you know, I want to say NRS because it's like, it, 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 it goes way back. It goes way, way back, you know, sure. some, of, some of the things that they've done. But, um, uh, but yeah, so, you know, I feel um, what you said about Battle Passes was great. I, I, I can 100% agree with that one. Um, they can work it's just a they balance can. i mean companies yeah. and they just players, have to be respectful they just need of to, your time and yeah money. they need to be willing to dance together mm-hmm. and companies need to not pull the player as aggressively to one direction and players can't be you know dragging their feet reluctantly and i think the reason why they mm-hmm. do is because companies the pendulum has gone too far in one direction these mm-hmm. days where it's like we saw with mk11 where it does not respect your time and it is mm-hmm. just grind 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 and a lot of games are like that these days yeah. or they do the free to play live service approach like halo or um call of duty but halo especially mm-hmm. was like we're a bare bones game out of the gate even though we're free to play and we don't have the means to give you all what you need content wise and we're kind mm-hmm. of fumbling all over the place but you know one thing that's working is our shop and our shop <laughs> is not cheap like that's I where know. we are at right now in gaming so i'm just waiting for the pendulum yeah. to come back just like it did with loot boxes with loot boxes uh it was really bad at one point when like mm-hmm. overwatch one came out and all that and eventually we loot started boxes killed that game come back around because like loot boxes were just Mm -hmm. it's not fun paying 30 dollars just to get one skin you want but it's a random chance like rocket league did it and all that type of stuff somebody in our comment section i'm sorry putting on your blast putting you on blast i don't even remember who said it but they said loot boxes would be way more preferable than battle pass and i am sorry strong disagree because as somebody that did (laughs) I've seen friends throw way too much money at loot boxes. It is yeah. dangerous. It is a gam- It is gambling. It is disgusting. I've thrown money at loot boxes, not to a, a crazy degree, but I've thrown twenty dollars towards a you know loot mm-hmm. boxes and not even got what I want at all. So I've that's never not fun. Ever done it? And the reason why is because it's like I don't want to throw twenty dollars at a chance of getting something that exactly. I actually want. Yeah, so it's horrible. It's horrible. It it's like, imagine yeah. going to going to a place like a fast food joint and being like, here's ten dollars. I hope I get what I want to eat today. Right. Like that's just total nonsense. It, it mm-hmm. would not work anywhere else. Um so yeah, I'm glad we moved away yeah. from that. But yeah, I think it's Hopefully that pendulum comes swinging back away from like, let's just take up as much as your time. We cannot mm-hmm. have you playing any other game. You must play our game. Our game is the only <laughs> game. Yeah. Like, no, we need to come away from that cough, mentality. Cough, World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um I yeah. feel like, uh, uh, so having said that, how do you feel about exclusive skins? Now you're not competitive. And here's the thing, when you said be respectful of your time, so with League of Legends, they do your battle pass, but there's like four, there's like four different, pa- four, I'm sorry, four different battle pass seasons within a year, okay? Mm-hmm. Or so, something like that. I could be wrong, but it, it's something like that. But then they have the actual season, the you know, the actual League of Legends ranked season, Okay, so you play ranks. So now we're he- now. I want to ask you back. I know you're not competitive, but I, oh, I'm, I'm no, a little no, competitive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I am competitive. It's just like I consider myself casually competitive. I mm-hmm. like okay. I like to win, but at the end of the day, yeah. what's most important to me is having fun. Right. right I don't right. like people that don't have fun unless they win. I like to. There's mm-hmm. a balance there. 
But at, yeah. at, at its core, I need to have fun, and I like to have fun, mm-hmm. and I like and I like to win. I mean, I played sports all the way up till high school, so I mean, I'm I'm definitely I love through competition, and I love to win. What's that? You said through high school or up to uh, high up school? until the begin, like up until like sophomore year in high school. I've done. Uh, okay. I did baseball for seven years. I did. I didn't do football because I had a hernia at some point that prevented mm, me from doing that. Yeah. Uh, I did um, volleyball. I did basketball. I did wrestling. Right. I did soccer when I was little. Are you from Nebraska? Don't get me wrong. I, Isn't wrestling yeah. like huge in Nebraska? Oh, it, it was. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, so, yeah, I've, I've done like I am absolutely competitive. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. It's just I am also a very empathetic person. So, mm-hmm. like, so this is a weird, like, little thing, but like, I'm not a big sports guy, even though I played a lot of sports growing up. I enjoy mm-hmm. playing. I don't enjoy watching so much, but I really enjoy mm-hmm. playing. I love playing sports. If you asked me to come play football or something, I would love to do that. If right. you asked me to come watch football, I probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. The times that I have watched like the Super Bowl, I just, and this is the reason why I mentioned being an, em- uh, an empath, I'm a very empathetic person. Is because when I watch the Super Bowl, I ended up I end up feeling worse for the team that loses than I do than I do feeling <laughs> yeah. good for the team that okay. won. I'm just like, man, that must be so heartbreaking to make it all the way to that point. You've made it to the game, the uh-huh. game, and you blew it like that. I just feel so bad for those players. Uh-huh. So the reason why I mention that is because when I'm playing like competitive games, uh-huh. like I've done tennis and I've done all that stuff as well. Like when I'm playing a competitive sport or even competitive fighting games, I will eventually, if I'm beating somebody, mm-hmm. I can't help but hold back at times because I oh, feel so bro. bad. You I know can't. that's that's like a that's a cardinal <laughs> sin no, in no, competitive no, no. game because nobody wants to win it. because I the other it. player let them win. But yeah. I start to feel so bad. I hate seeing somebody upset and disappointed. Mm-hmm. I never want to upset anybody. I'm a people pleaser at the end of the day, but. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, <laughs> that's, that's how strong of an empath I am is like, I just like, yeah, uh, so, so I'm competitive, but competitive uh, to a point. I, like at the end of the day, I, I want everybody it. to be having fun, but that's yeah. also why I like team aspects. Cause if I can yeah. co-op with somebody, I have no problem slamming, you know, a random duo I find online into the ground and rubbing their face in it. <laughs> but when it comes yeah, to yeah. my friends, on the other hand, I don't want to like, you know okay. make the i don't want to ruin their night by beating their ass I, <laughs> I, <laughs> so i don't like, know well uh i'm not gonna talk to talk to cyborg anymore <laughs> so, so yeah. because because he just wiped the floor with me yeah no i get it i get it um yeah i'm i'm yeah i hate losing that's the thing um sure i oh, hate, I, mean... I, I hate losing more than i like winning <laughs> I, so funny. I, I i yeah. hate losing i can understand so, that it's um when i'm playing with friends and also um i train jujitsu in jujitsu we have a saying which is uh there's winning and learning and right. so whenever i play with guys like temp and down four and gab standard it, it, i learned so much from them even though i'm losing and that's something i've I've actually learned more in the past five years mm-hmm. to be honest because i was no i was always like the, i just had to win um i still i still am i still am very much like i, I you know i i I, I need to win, but it's, it's, um, <laughs> it, I, I still am like that, but it's like, whenever I play with guys, like, like the ones I just mentioned, it's like, I, I know that I'm going to learn when I play right. against them. So, um, I, I take those losses with, with learning, but, um, <clears throat> but, uh, um, for the ranked player, for the person who just has to win for the people, you know, it's like, I feel like, uh, uh, for them, I don't think um, skins matter too much for them. Um, sure. The stuff like that, because they're really in it for the ranked. They're really right. in it for the, the status and the appeal. They're in it for the fighting game. Right. They're not in it for the dressing. They're in it for the um, fighting game. And yeah. One guy particularly, I really like watching him um, for is a Destiny player. His name is uh, uh, Grenader Jake. And, um, what a name. I love uh, it. I know. Right. Yeah. Grenade or Jake and, uh, uh, really, really good destiny player. But it's like, I remember watching, uh, seeing like his outfit 
and everything and like the guns he would use and stuff like that oh it looked awful right <laughs> he just he he was only in it for the stats like he did not care what it looked like and i get that um i told uh me i like aesthetics i like to yeah i really like skins and i really like oh, to yeah. you know i'm the same it. way yeah uh, as the artist in me mm -hmm. uh absolutely cares about that stuff like i yeah. will spend like in wwe games i will spend hours making my character like Mm -hmm. me like i'll put in like all my tattoos and i'll i will go the extra <laughs> mile uh -huh. to make my outfit as like cool as possible in my opinion but then yeah. there's like then i have like a brother that he hates customization to him that's just a complete waste of time like <laughs> come on let's just play yeah. let's just play there is absolutely it's like yeah no, there's those up. different types perfect. of people like yeah, yeah. no i get Big, it yeah no, but I get it. But anyway, um, uh, so we mentioned battle passes and being being completely respectful of your time and everything. Well, one th everything that you mentioned um, as far as the battle passes go, mm -hmm. it, it sounds a lot or similar to what was seasons in Mortal Kombat 11. How, however, hmm. it was like, yeah, you know, I didn't, I wouldn't know too yeah, well, know, other than like brief understanding of what the combat league yeah. did. Well, here's the thing is that if it was a battle pass, as far as something like, okay, you had four skins per season, and if it's something that <laughs> in four know. skins per season, that's a that's quite the statement. <laughs> you just got it didn't you i was like three two one oh there you go yeah. that's fine. <laughs> okay that... so there's one skin you get for playing and then there's three skins that you get <laughs> <laughs> you're good <laughs> skins times four that you get per season i gotcha <laughs> f-o-f-o-u-r yes anyway uh, <laughs> i ruined it i know i was i'm silly sometimes i'm mature it's getting late okay. <laughs> um we'll recover I'm glad we could be, right. i'm glad we could be mature about this um <laughs> no it was that actually it was really funny it was uh when i was recording with bresk the other day i said i said something i was like um, it needs to be, you know, I was like, the, something needs to be bigger and longer than it has been before <laughs> in the past. And he didn't say anything, but inside my head, I was sitting there and I was like, that's what she said. Okay. And like, I wanted, <laughs> I, I wanted to, I was like, I wanted to laugh, but I, I, I got there anyway. Um, uh, quick tangent. Speaking of you, uh, recording episodes, I do want to say, I haven't checked out the brusque one uh -huh. cause you just dropped that. What? Like yesterday or two days ago. To, but i did i've checked out one of your episodes it was with temp i think the last time he came on uh -huh. and one i want to say because i was going to say this off the top but uh i didn't want to disrupt at that point but uh one i gotta say awesome job um so i can pat you on the back for a little bit here um i really enjoyed that like i don't watch or listen to anybody else's content because mm -hmm. i as a content creator myself of mortal Kombat stuff i'm usually like tapped out like mm -hmm. i'll check out some of Bruss stuff occasionally like if i'm intrigued just because he's a friend but like nobody else do i really get into because it's like i i do all my talking i have my outlet already yeah i don't need to hear much else other than that um but man i was just glued in on your podcast with temp i thought it was awesome mm -hmm. um I, I thought you did a great job. My instant thought was like, how do I get this guy to do a podcast with me? Like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so the fact that you asked, oh, well, no, this is after you asked me. Okay. I wanted to check out and see what you did. But I was like, man, I, I need to get this guy. Like, I want to do like a duos podcast with this guy. Because this guy, yeah. no, I think I think you're going, uh, I think you're going places, man. You got a good vibe going on here. And this oh, has thanks, been man. a lot of fun. So I, I just wanted to that. say Thank that. You. I was going to say that off the top. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you got a good voice and a good, a good, like, system going mm -hmm. um and two um yeah I, I just thought the you had the discussion with temp was a lot of fun well thanks man so, that, that means a lot i really appreciate that yeah. thank you so much um and you're fairly new right this is what number six for you like this your is sixth a, episode this is episode this. six yep episode six yeah so 
Awesome. So I, I'm that. excited, man. This is yeah. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny because I was like, I, I was, uh, uh, it's, it's really cool because like, you know, I, I knew my friend, uh, Shinobi would be on, Brian would be on, um, actually rain, rain reptile wants to come on too. So yeah, I think we're going to, yeah, yeah, we're going to do, we're going to do one, um, uh, probably the next one, uh, we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, I was like, um, uh, having temp and then I had rufal monger and breast poet on there. I, I was really surprised. <laughs> that, rufal monger. Dude, That's I was, funny name. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was really surprised when he answered an email. Like I was just like, oh, I'll just throw this out there. See if he, is he did. a FGC guy? Rufal monger. Yeah. yeah or, he's, he's the guides okay. guy. He's, he is the guy. Um, we talked about it too, dude. He, dude, that guy will play. 300 games of one character just that a Crazy. character that he hates just to make a guide and i was just like that's insane but i, I, I admire I that oh, that's dude, awesome i couldn't do that no way man um well, that takes I, commitment and passion i can make a guide of a character i really like i can do that but dude he would be like i'm you know he said i'll play ken for 300 games to make a guide on ken and i'm like and he goes, and I hate Ken. <laughs> it's like, oh. or so, it was something like this, some character. But anyway, yeah. Respect, cool. respect to him, man. Dude, like as yeah. a, as a guy, like, so since I obviously recently got back into like making videos, mm -hmm. it's some, uh, I told Bruss this earlier this morning, but like last night mm -hmm. I was trying to nail a, it was last night or the night before. I can't remember. I think mm -hmm. I talked to him yesterday and we were talking about the night prior, but anyways, so I was trying to nail a like a 40 second intro to my latest video mm -hmm. and it no joke took me about four and a half hours just to nail a, a 40 second intro yeah. all it is. And it's just, you know, when I'm reading, you know, reading from a script or something that I write up in terms of like the voiceover, mm -hmm. that is easy that I can be super punctual because I'm, I'm reading what I'm saying. So right. it's really easy for me to be enthusiastic and not mess it up. But if I am sitting here staring at you and I'm like, on today's video, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I'm trying to like list uh -huh. 80 things and I'm trying to do a no cuts because mm -hmm. a lot of people use cuts and I, I've never done that. I've always tried to nail it in one take mm -hmm. and I'll sound like the micro machines guy as I list off 80 million things or mm -hmm. whatever. Yep. I'll flub over one word. So uh, no joke, like at least three and a half to four hours um, spent trying to get like a, a 40 second intro and mm -hmm. I, the reason why i bring that up is i don't think people understand what goes into some videos because they just see it as like oh this is a six minute you know this is a typical youtube stuff they don't really understand what goes into a lot of these things uh and i'm a bit of a perfectionist so if i mess up one little detail mm -hmm. i'll i'll Same. run that thing back 800 times until i get it exactly the way it <laughs> needs to be if yeah. i take too long in between words i'm like i will notice that and i'm like okay need to do it again so uh i usually yeah. do so about, shout outs i usually well, I was do just gonna about say six, shout outs to go, go ahead go, go ahead. Here, no no i was gonna <laughs> say i usually do about six to ten takes of my intros alone and everything because right. i'll be like okay i'll say like hey what's going on welcome to shrek <clears throat> yeah and hey, you'll mess up. Yeah, yeah and you will and then you'll say and and then i'll be like okay uh, i'll say everything i need to say oh i missed this one thing and then i'll say it the right way but then i'm like listening to my voice and i'm like that's not the way I wanted to sound. Yeah, you'll it, it'll oh sound gosh. phony or it'll sound forced or mm -hmm. you'll screw up on a word or it'll come out weird or maybe you take a breath in between words and you're like, okay, mm -hmm. that doesn't sound right. That sounds weird. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah, about to ruin every, any little thing. I'm about to ruin every single one of my videos right now, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'll um, I I I'll talk, but I take deep breaths and stuff. Sure. So I'll just be like, you know. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Shred Gaming, and uh, today we're going to talk about, you know, why Vegeta does not belong in the next, <laughs> sure, <laughs> like that, and I'll do that, but then I'll listen to, and when I'm going through my editing, you and know, the breath will come in, and I'll hear the breath, and I'm just like, dude, my breath sounds so loud. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I trust me. I heard it in your podcast. <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah. it reminded me. Uh -huh. In my head, I was like... I was going to mention, I was going to mention to you privately, the breath, like just as a, <laughs> as a video maker yeah. and a podcaster and somebody 
that is always wanting to help others, you know, mm-hmm. give them kind of like a heads up, like with stuff. So yeah, yeah. Those but breaths, it, man, that's tough. I, yeah. I think that's more of like I. I think it's you might want to like, look into like, do you have like a cover for your microphone or anything that you can do? Because some of it should be able to filter one. out some of that stuff. Um, I think I'm gonna use. Uh, I have. A, I, I already have like four different compressors onto my right. audios. Um, I could probably turn the gain down um a little bit but yeah i mean but, we're belaboring the point but anyway, yeah i just but my point is like were, shout were, out original I, shout out to original okay. reason why yeah shout outs to what was his name R- rufal monger yes shout outs to you for spending the time to do that because <laughs> yeah. nobody appreciates that kind of stuff like i said as mm-hmm. a fellow video maker like i'll make a two and a half hour podcast mm-hmm and that's just two and a half hours, like, and then you upload it, but I don't really edit them these days just because like what, what yeah. is, what it is, is what it is. And I think we all have good enough sound quality that we c- I can get away with that at this mm-hmm. point. But in the early days, I would spend like two or three hours just editing one podcast on top of, you know, the recording time. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I say that is like my videos take like freaking nine hours, but you nine or 10 or 11 hours, but you wouldn't know it because it's only, you know, six or seven minutes long. So shout out to you, sir, because holy cow, if you're putting in 300 or what what did you say? 300 games with Ken? Yeah. yeah. With Ken, somebody you hate, Uh like props to you, dude, that is passion. And that is commitment and dedication. And I hope this guy gets all the success in the world because that yeah. is freaking cool like when i hear good when, job dude. when i heard that i was just like dude i i couldn't do that no way man so props to you and i I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I found him because I, I think i was looking for i was i was looking up some kind of for a guide or or like a combo guide or strategy guide or something like that and and then you know all of his guides were up and you you can find them and you can go on right. his channel and stuff like that but i but then when he told you know we talked a little bit before and after the recording and uh dude it's freaking uh he was like oh yeah i'd play, I'd play like 200 and 300 games <laughs> oh with this character I was like, dude, f that no way man but yeah props to you man Pro- huge yeah, props to Rufo, that man. is that is awesome yeah but um i appreciate your kind words man that's awesome thank you so much i really do appreciate oh, that you, dude yeah. i mean i i there needs to be more positivity mm-hmm. just in general in in the community people in general mm-hmm. like got to support each other but i mean i'm also just being honest like as soon as i heard the quality like i said when you were talking to temp um Mm -hmm. yeah i was just like this dude's this dude's got it you got a Mm -hmm. good like vibe and voice trust me i've heard i've heard all sorts of different people i've heard all sorts of different podcasts and i think for Mm -hmm. these to be your first episodes your first episodes sound better than our first episode (laughs) so i props to you man like you're really uh it yeah, was, you, you know, really speaking of your fur, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, is when Temp told me that the first episode of the Nethercast was the first time all of you guys have heard each other's voices, like for the first time. Yeah. I, I was, Except for we had to re record that, which he revealed. He but, told me that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he did tell me that. He, he <laughs> said that. So I think something it, got it, screwed up in Adobe so, Audition or whatever. He, and it, he, the he entire first episode. Like yeah, 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 yeah. No, it wasn't that. It was okay. like it crashed while I was editing it. So it oh, all just went away. Oh, no. So then I'm like, hey, guys. Uh, yeah. So you're not going to believe this, but yeah, it, we it's lost all it. gone. We lost yeah. The it's, this bad mistake was oh, that's the only time that happened cross my fingers but yeah that's the only time that happened and it, yeah. it we re-recorded had all like the same you know topics and all that but mm-hmm. yeah it's funny that it worked that's, out that way okay um so okay so uh uh back on the topic of uh um of skins and uh uh our skins what we were talking about was ranked we were talking sure. about ranked and we we're talking about the uh doing that right um how do you feel about exclusive skins for ranked? And the reason why mm. I brought up League of Legends was because their seasons, their ranked seasons, last an entire year. You right. don't get the rewards till the next year. I and by the way, if you if you need to if if if, if you need to go. Oh, I don't have to go. I'm, oh, okay. I'm here as long. I'm having and I've been looking like Mm-hmm. So what I didn't say in in telling you how much I love the podcast with Temp, I mm-hmm. have been looking forward to this. So oh, that's awesome, man! Don't get me wrong, 
like <laughs> i don't have to record or do anything but talk this is an awesome experience yeah, so yeah. like not being the guy that has to record this is great and like <laughs> yeah. i've been looking forward to talking to you so don't yeah don't mm -hmm. feel like you have to rush by it's a friday night 1046 for me i am good to go as long as yeah. you want to go sir okay. i'm having a blast awesome but anyways on the topic mm -hmm. um ranked skins exclusives um you know i mean on one hand i love the idea of it because it's something you work hard for and you can say look at what i earned yes on the other hand not everybody's as good at the game so then to exclude something that they like that could be a skin that they think is the coolest skin in the world but they'll never have it because they're just because they're not good enough mm -hmm. so i mm -hmm. think it's a fine balance. I think it's a tight rope walk. Um, so I would like to see it happen, but it would have to come with a parameter that maybe I don't want to say put it in the shop because then that's kind of a cop out because then it's like anybody that earned it the mm -hmm. legit way might not be like, then everyone's going to be like, Oh, you bought that see, skin. You pay, you paid for success or you pay, yeah. you paid, you just bought the skin. It's like, it then it kind of takes away some of the glory. So I totally get why that is not uh -huh. acceptable either. Um, see with this, there isn't a balance. That's the, that's the harsh thing is that. So uh, you're, you're wanting full on ranked exclusives. I, okay. Is what, what you're thinking. Uh -huh. And here, here's, here's what my, <laughs> here's, here's what my, Go so, ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I feel so with the way league does it when they originally did it was uh, you know, for a long time they did it, it was uh gold. You hit gold rank, you get the skin. Okay. That's all you had to do was hit gold rank. Right. Now they have more, you know, as you go up to platinum champion and stuff like that, you know, you hit diamond, you hit challenger, you get, you know, a specific reward there and a specific rewards there that you can okay. only get for getting that. Now, um, the only way I can see being a balance would have to be to get, okay, if I got, and by the way, um, I say all this because I feel the the thing I hated the most about Mortal Kombat 11 was the ranks, the ranking mm -hmm. seasons only lasted about a month. I felt like okay. they should have been, at, like if it was me, it would have been a year, but at least six months. And um, mm. because like, like I want to be respectful of your time. Right. Because if you make it to only one month, that means you only have one month. Now to get to, um, you know, they would have your just play one game or what was it? Um, yeah, play one game. You get this. You get the one skin, the bottom tier skin, and then you play five games. Then you get the uh, so you there's the just play the play the one ranked game. You get the skin and then you play five games. You're at the bottom tier. You have to work your way up. So then you get the skin, right? You work your way up then this skin and then work your way up to elder God. You get the skin, right? Right. Okay. So that's how that worked. Well, what I hated was to get that skin on the very top. You had to be really mm -hmm. good. Right. But six months later, new season comes out. They would flip them around to where it's like, okay, all you all you had to play was five games to get what was the top tier skin is now at the bottom skin and mm -hmm. it's like i didn't just climb this ladder to get yep. this skin you know because you can't be half pregnant so like <laughs> you gotta go all in with uh -huh. the skin that you earn or you don't go at all so even though i have hesitations with the idea of a, of a, a skill based ranked based skin like that mm -hmm. You don't make that the lowest tier on the next time because that just, like I said, you can't be half pregnant. So mm -hmm. it's either you go in and do that or you don't. Yeah. So don't make somebody work super hard for something. Mm -hmm. And it's just why I said why I don't think it would be good to put it in the shop because then you muddy the waters. Then it's like, mm -hmm. how are you going to feel accomplished anymore and feel good about yourself anymore. If you know Joe Blow down the street could just go buy it in the shop for five dollars, and it and nobody's going to be able to distinguish the difference between what you work so hard to earn versus what they just spent a little money on. Or in the case that you're mentioning, it's now been the easy skin. Like so, then anybody can have it. You got to be able to relish in that fact for a few days, a mm -hmm. few weeks, whatever. Like, <clears throat> no, no, sir, that would be bad. Yeah. I would not like that. So I don't think that's a good compromise. Um, 
Because I like the, the only reason I like that is because in League of Legends, I like the idea of um in even the skins by you like the, the switch or no, I like do not. where it goes from okay you I, like the fact that there's something that's, i earn that I'd earn, i like yeah. the idea that i i grinded out ranked and i watched all the strategy guides i watched all the different you know tactics guides and the character guides like i put time and effort into the lab okay i reached elder god during the season i got this skin and right. i like that now the balance what you could what we could what you could do is you can pick that skin in the shop but have it maybe be a different color scheme sure so oh that, absolutely you know so maybe it's like you had the that top tier now i'm a katana main so you'd have that top tier you know there it'd be katana and um and if you wanted you know it would be it would be like gold or whatever it'd be like a silver platinum, a platinum trim or whatever so, to her outfit so that way like, it's like yeah. these are the guys that or maybe her fans are made of diamond you know something that says this Elder person God, yeah. worked super hard for this and this is special but mm -hmm. if you weren't able to accomplish that you can still get something that's similar but mm -hmm. just doesn't have that signifier that yeah. that was going to be my one of my suggested compromises mm -hmm. is if because you're suggesting to have like an actual unique skin, not just mm -hmm. a color scheme to something, right? So if you do a unique skin, I would say I don't like it at all because then that unique skin, that could be, like I said, somebody's favorite. But at the same time, if you're offering a color scheme that's not with that special signifier as something that somebody else could get in an mm -hmm. easier means, then by all means. I mean, I think games typically do that. Like things like Rocket League or Halo, um, I don't know about Call of Duty, but well, even Call mm. of Duty, because you got to earn things eventually. I don't know about rank, though. But anyways, mm. typically gaming has signifiers that show your rank. Like, mm -hmm. OK, you made it to Diamond, you made it to Platinum, you made it to Onyx or whatever and or Champion. And you get like an emblem or something that you can put on your player card that says this is how good you are. And you get to show that off and feel good about yourself mm -hmm. to put that on a skin that I think something like a color scheme, a unique color scheme, color scheme would absolutely be acceptable. A very unique skin by itself, unless it's like a crown or something, which like if you put a crown mm -hmm. on on somebody or a special like lapel or, you know, like a little uh, uh, a medal or something around their neck or something, something like more brooch? minor like that. Yeah, like just something more <laughs> minor on their yeah. outfit that shows that you did something special or like I said, like diamond fans or something. Mm -hmm. Then I think that's acceptable and OK and I could get on board with that. But like a full on like I'm, I'm talking like. Let's say they put Katana's MKX main skin, but the only way to get that skin at all is by getting, you know, the mm -hmm. highest tier of that. That I think might be a little bit cruel to the people that aren't very good unless unless you put in like a team mode like tag and then somebody can be like hey dude help <laughs> yeah. me get this damn skin that i want you're really good mm -hmm. help carry me up to this level so i can get this skin Boom, then, and there it is there there you go there's the yeah, co-op thing yes tie it all back around but there yeah in that case then i, I would be fully full on circle. board regardless but mm -hmm. yeah i mean i totally dig what you're saying though like as like i said a competitive person if you put a skin on there that I really want, that mm -hmm. is probably going to compel me to at least play enough to get that skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and there I is feel, that. I feel like, yeah, and I feel like Lee getting to getting to gold is not is is pretty standard. Um, yeah. If you're that's... if you're getting to gold, you're t you're for, I th oh gosh, what is like? I think it's like forty percent. So it was like it, it was right. it was a decent amount of time to get there, but it was still wasn't like you know. You you weren't an iron or bronze player, of course, but it's like you're also. Not what are a... all the tiers in in league? Gosh, what is there now? Iron, bronze, silver, gold, um, platinum, diamond type platinum, of thing. Diamond, uh, platinum, diamond, sh then what's after diamond? I think challenger is after that one. Yeah, I think that's okay. It. There's a lot. And most games, yeah, most mm -hmm. games have something like like Halo has your bronze, your silver, your gold, your mm -hmm. platinum, your mm -hmm. uh, diamond, and then like champion rank on top of that. So every yeah, typically games have a system like that. I yeah. was just curious. And so you're saying for this particular skin, are you saying the the highest of high tier, or are you saying like gold where most people are able to get so to? So with league, it's or you hit different gold for each. With League, you hit gold, 
and then there's the skin. There's the the season ranked right. skin that you get. They've done this since season one. And then um, once you get higher, you get border walls um, yeah. as it goes up. Now, uh, Tekken does a very similar. They have belts. So, right. you, you know, you move up with your belts and everything. And then Street Fighter kind of does the same thing. But they're, um, uh, what I like about League is the fact that they have, like, appearance-wise things that you can see in game. That Here's you what I do. Mm -hmm. here's what i do so let's say i mean this might be pie in the sky like this might be more work than they're willing to do but mm -hmm. i mean maybe not it's just like texture changes and stuff right but here's what i would do i would have it be based on the character you used for a majority of those matches for that season mm -hmm. so that could influence what you do so let's say i'm using katana let's use a character that we've been talking about mm -hmm. And if I get bronze, I get bronze fans. If I get silver, I get silver fans. If I get gold, I get gold fans. If I mm -hmm. get diamond, I get diamond encrusted fans. If I make it all the way to the top tier, I'm not like champion or whatever special mm -hmm. elder god or whatever special rank that they have. I'm not getting a color scheme on that thing. I mean, you earn, you can earn all the previous tiers or whatever, just so mm -hmm. you get like all the rewards going up. So I could have diamond fans on top of what I'm going to get for the champion tier or whatever mm -hmm. elder god. But if I make it to the very top, those fans should have a special effect on them too. So it has like a like a, a sparkly effect or a you know some sort of like, like a visual glow. flare, yeah, yeah, a glow or a visual flare mm -hmm. to it as well. And you should have that unique based on the season. Maybe it's themed. So if you have like a uh, like a zombie themed, whatever your tall your highest tier is something zombie related, or if it's mm -hmm. outworld themed, maybe it glows purple or you know whatever. So I would do something like that, like what you're saying, mm -hmm. but rather than have it be specifically a unique skin, I would have it be something on that skin that is signif is a signifier for how high you made it in that mm -hmm. tier, but then have the top tier be more of like a special effect. Have it really, like when I'm thinking Halo, I'm thinking grunt birthday party, you know, like where <laughs> you pop the head off and it goes, yay, and does the, like the, <laughs> the, the yeah. confetti while yeah. it does it. Like that's what, when you make it to the top tier, it uh -huh. should be absolutely apparent that, hey, this person went above and beyond and got something way mm -hmm. cool. Maybe, Maybe it's like an electricity effect on her fans or something if it's like Thunder God season or something. You know what I mean? Like something right, right, like right. that. Mm -hmm. But if you do it for all characters, that's one thing. But maybe it is character specific to where it's only one character. But what I like is like have a reward for no matter what character you play as because mm -hmm. then you avoid... Oh, this is Baraka's season. So if you make it to the highest tier, you get the skin for Baraka. It's like, what if I don't care about Baraka? Then yeah. I am not going to try very hard. Or if I do try very hard, I'm not going to feel very rewarded or care about what I'm getting. Now, if you make a character specific based on the character you used most, that is guaranteed to mm -hmm. reward you for the character that you main or you play and you chose to main for that season. Yeah. So that's, in that's my case, League, like that's where League falls short. It's it's only one. Yeah. There, season one was Jarvan, the championship Jarvan. I, I believe season two was, uh, uh, gosh, who was it? I think it was J Jana. It right. was, it was, it was only that. And I was taking out. There's 162 characters. I mean, right. You have it. The next season is one of 162 chance you're gonna get a skin of a champion that you may or may not use. Mm, so yeah, that nah. I don't, I don't think that works anymore. Um, right. But it, I mean. Yeah, I've I've never I don't like using Jarvan, so that doesn't work for me. Um, Which is the beauty yeah. of yeah, what I'm saying is like mm -hmm. you play. Who's your main? Who's your main in MK11? Or who's your, just your favorite character in general? Oh, uh, Katana. Okay, Katana. Mm -hmm. So then you do get the fans that do like the mm -hmm. special fun effect, whatever it ends up being like a a shadowy effect or whatever for that season. Mm -hmm. And then if I play Baraka. Maybe those effects are on his blades, or if I play Sub Zero, maybe when he does his freeze motion, it has the extra effect, or maybe it's just like his his mask is gold or whatever. You know, you could yeah. do it a bunch of different ways based on the character, but then everybody has a desire to do that. And mm -hmm. granted, you couldn't redo like the gold or the diamond unless you change the piece of the clothing that's being affected by it yeah. or the skin that you're getting it for, vice, you know, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. They have to be creative about it. But I think at least then 
then you com- it's it's the best of both worlds. You feel like you're getting something as a player that you can show off. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves to show off something cool that they really had to earn that not in- just anybody can get. But also, it's not something like a very unique skin. It's something like an effect or turning her fans a certain thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that way it's not so... It's not like her deception or, you know, like uh, Sub-Zero's deception skin, the Shredder Zero, where mm. people are going to be pissed off if they miss out on it. So they don't have to throw it in the store, make it the easy tier the next season just to keep people happy. Yeah. It's kind of the best. Like, it's that compromise, I feel, where you can mm-hmm. please everybody. Yeah. So that, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, that would be so, dude, I, I don't know why I just had this when you said that this thing is like, dude, that'd be so cool to do some kind of like winter like skin and then like while uh if if katana has her fans out like she does in mortal kombat 11 if she had like 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 frost um particles uh, coming off and then like part of her fans are ice ice yeah like like, that's what i'm saying man you could do you can spread during like a a lava theme or a a fire theme or during the summer or whatever you Mm -hmm. do like a a heat theme and so our fans the blades on our fans are glowing like hot metal and Mm -hmm. have like sparks coming off them or like embers like you can milk this sort of thing for every every character character. for every season (laughs) but that's the thing is you don't have to it's just an effect yeah so these are special effects and textures that they just have to make once and then apply them to all the characters Mm -hmm. so the the amount of work isn't like insane to me uh so i don't think it's asking too much but then yeah you could just make baraka's blades glow like hot you know molten metal Mm -hmm. for that season or be covered in ice for that season like you can do this whole thing and you can easily cover all the seasons that they would typically do for their them supporting the game for the couple of years that they do anyways so yeah yeah so, so I, I don't think that's too crazy no not at all and that's something i really hope that they do i really hope that Ed, that boon sticks by and the nrs sticks by the whole like you know supporting the game and to keep the support of the game but i mean i think you and i can both agree that it's like it, or i think that you and i have come agree that like d- continual dlc and continual you know right uh, up, updates, updating man. of that well, not, like, not, not, and not just yeah not just balance updates uh, not at all oh, yeah. uh, what i'm talking well, like you're saying like dlc content. updates, content yeah exactly so you know that's a lot and to, i mean a more more than more than like a month and a half should not pass in these games these days without mm-hmm. providing some sort of at least free content along mm-hmm. with the paid content you can if you want to put out like skins every week or every day like call of duty does in the store for cheap do that yeah. but then yeah. you should also Sales. be doing like free content every month and a half just to bring people back the whole point is to hook you to bring you back give you a reason to come back and play that's what they love to do anyways mm-hmm. you just gotta be like smart about it don't be egregious don't don't, don't show greedy. your cards. That, yeah. yeah, don't show your cards that all you care about is the money. You at least need to put on the visage that you want us to come back and play and have fun with your game yeah. and you're making content because you like to. Because you are, I mean, um uh, uh set aside from sir, you are essentially as a as a business, you are making a contract. You are making an invisible contract with your consumer as right. to say, like, I will provide, you know, come and play our game, enjoy our game for, you know, our numbers and and, and boost and stuff like that, and to and to purchase our stuff. But and I'll also give you give you things that are not without side the realm of what is possible for you you know did they do that in mk11 because i know with like mk9 especially i can't remember i think in mkx as well where they would like with all their their like updates that they would do prior to like a combat pack being released they'd always put out like the free skins with the update do they do that with mk11 so repeat that one more time i'm sorry so with mk9 Uh uh-huh for sure and then I think with MKX, they put out like when they would do like the updates prior to the the latest combat pack that was about to release, they would always put out an update to get everybody to up like to basically load that content onto their console. Uh-huh. Whether they were gonna buy the combat pack or not, they would always put out an update and they would usually feature like a couple free skins with that update. Like think back to like classic, hmm. the cyborg skins, the classic cyborg skins, or the mm-hmm. classic ninja skins. They would put those out with the update, as like for free, basically with each update leading to the combat pack. I'm not sure, to be honest. 
for MK11? Yeah. I can't. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not Obviously, sure. I don't know either. Comment down below. I know they had the ones the in the answer. store. Yeah, yeah, I know they had the ones in the store. The, yeah. the packs were like the masquerade pack and the the DC yeah. looking pack. But then, and then they also had you know the stuff that they sold. But yeah, I can't remember if they put out any like free outfits or not. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But um, yeah, is there uh, um, any any final thoughts or anything that that you feel that we missed? Hmm. Uh, I mean, we've covered a lot in terms of that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I've said a lot just in general over yeah. a lot of things. So I can't think of anything off the top of my head other than it's just a matter of respecting your player, respecting the consumers. Mm -hmm. And it's a dance you got to be willing to do as a company to not try <laughs> and just completely be greedy as a company. Mm -hmm. So keep updating your game, provide some free content, keep people, you can keep people coming back from that as well mm -hmm. as the paid content and keep it reasonably priced and keep updating your game with new stuff and then give people more ways to play than just the way that they're currently being able to yeah. play like the one on one. So yeah, I mean, I think we covered all that kind yeah. of stuff on those topics and i want to, to just to reiterate and kind of like go uh what we talked about initially with like you know the co-op that's like if if any phone from nrs is listening that's probably that that's arguably probably the most important thing is making you can you can make all the dlc you want and keep going with that and stuff and you know i i i really don't mind using other games like cod like league like you know uh apex as um examples, examples and, yeah. and i don't i i think it's okay to copy their to copy their systems oh, yeah. it's it's one cherry pick it's take the totally best parts okay. of each oh yeah take the best parts of each of them yeah. and figure out how can we avoid yeah. any mistakes that they may have made along the way or making currently and let's just they should their goal should be let's make if we're going to do battle passes let's make mm -hmm. the best battle pass there's no reason why they should go into it thinking yeah let's just they got away with it so let's get it like no they do enough research and they know mm -hmm. enough that, i mean i'm sure they have plenty of people that work they probably there have an entire analysis team yeah yeah i mean play it themselves so they know what works mm -hmm. and what doesn't and that's that's the crazy thing to me is because remember back when mk11 came out and it was super grindy right out of the gate mm -hmm. like even worse than it is in its current state um they they lessened up a little bit mm -hmm. but i remember them doing like the combat cast and they're like yeah and i remember derek even holding the piece of paper or i think it was tyler holding the piece of paper but derek would always be like yeah we, we've heard you on this one and yep we're not going to do that and we're going to lessen up on this and we're going to you know give you more for this and do this mm -hmm. and do that and it's like you know how you avoid that to begin with is just be real. Like you, there was no way you thought that was acceptable out of the mm -hmm. gate to begin with. I'm sure a lot of the developers knew right away because they play the game. They play the game themselves and they mm -hmm. know that that is not an ideal system. I, I remember with Halo Infinite in the early stages, especially in those initial growing pains, not the ones they're currently dealing with, but mm -hmm. they'd have like a lot of their developers on Twitter or in their videos say, Yes, I, I as a player myself of our own game, obviously, just playing at, at home, I this has been a negative experience. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's no way you all didn't know this ahead of time. It's just I'm sure you're not the ones making those decisions. It's the higher ups that make these decisions mm -hmm. and they're trying to, you know, make it they're trying to squeeze every ounce of your time and every ounce that they can get out of you. But if you just lighten up a little bit and you just listen to the people that actually play this game and enjoy this game, including your own developers that are huge, passionate fans of the series they're working on. If you just listen to them on what's fun and what's acceptable versus what's not and then find that balance and mm -hmm. you go for that, there's something to be said for that. And I there think is. That's very you're well. going to. There's, well, I mean, it's just go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that I think it's very well said uh, right there is 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 just the respect of your time and money making you know something that's that that's uh, that's that's fun and also being transparent you know we've talked a lot about that with like um uh nakiyama and matsumoto and Har harada you know being very transparent with their games and um um one thing i remember uh, i i do remember this um uh i mentioned sparrow rest sparrow racing from destiny right okay it was um 
I re- and I'll, every dawning, every single dawning, everybody always says like, oh, bring back Sparrow Racing, bring back Sparrow <laughs> Racing, you know, and they do every single time without fail. And it's as much as we love that the Destiny dev team actually did openly say and gave out a notice saying, we're really sorry. We would love to bring back Sparrow Racing. We've heard you. However, it is way too expensive for us to make that. And we do not receive enough returns. Sure. So we can't. And I thought that was very respectful because it's like, we would love to do that for you. However, we do not have the money to do that. And I actually, yeah. I respected that significantly. So that leads to the, my final, the final thing. Do you, the, uh, do you think that all of these things that we mentioned, the DLC, the co-op, all that, all those things, do you think this is too much for NRS to handle? Or do you think this is within the realm of possibilities of, of what they can do? Like, do you think they're going to receive enough returns upon all of these, because all of these requests, you know? Um, I'll say this. Okay. It's made it it's been made clear to me WB and several other companies they mm-hmm. do I I don't think they care enough about being the cool company. And I say that quite literally. I don't mm-hmm. think they care enough about being the cool company. We've seen with WB and we've seen with other companies mm-hmm. they will swing for the fences and then some when it comes to just seeing what their fans will tolerate. Like they will try and go with the absolute worst first approach to see if Mm -hmm. they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll dial it back from there rather than what I think would be more beneficial instead of being that company that, like I said, leads with a egregious number out of the gate, knowing full well, they're going to have to scale back when people backlash rather than just being the company that tries to avoid the backlash to begin with. And Mm -hmm. just out of the gate makes it fun and makes it seem like a compromise. I think they're worried about doing that for whatever reason, or maybe it's just greed or whatever the case but i think something needs to be said that i it's okay like just be cool be respectful (laughs) be real like listen yeah no listen to your developers listen to the people that are making you the money that you're making like Mm -hmm. nrs your question was is that too much for nrs to handle for nrs absolutely not i think nrs can handle all of this i think the developers are really cool and know how to make the right game. I don't think mm-hmm. they're the ones that ultimately make a lot of these decisions. And that's not mm-hmm. me trying to be smirch WB. WB's given me uh, so many properties that I love on. I've got freaking, you know, Batman tattoos right. when they own DC. <laughs> so it's yeah. like I'm I'm kind of beholden to them as a company with with DC and MK yeah. being owned by them, along with Looney Tunes mm-hmm. and all the other fun stuff that they right, have. Right, right. But that being said, I don't think companies I, I, some companies just like to get in their own way. They like to shoot themselves in the foot and they don't like to listen to the people that know what the hell they're talking about it mm-hmm. against their better judgment. They'll cut off their nose to spite their face. And that's the kind of stuff that I just wish we could get past because if it's up to NRS, I think NRS knows what the community wants. I think they know the mm-hmm. characters they want. I know they know the modes that they want. Mm-hmm. Ed Boone, God bless him for uh, filtering through all of the crap that he gets on Twitter of like just the most disrespectful stuff and character requests and just Bruh. just crazy <laughs> stuff that he I'm, gets at I know at, man at, at, at all times of the yeah. day at all hours at any subject at any you know any topic whatever he's constantly getting bombarded with the stuff bless mm-hmm. him for trying but like they know like they know what people want and they are very capable of delivering on that they they've shown that Mm-hmm. But ultimately, there are, like you said, there are entire sections at these companies that are dedicated to trying to find what is going to be acceptable, trying to find the thinnest of margins of lines to push onto the consumer and see if they'll just eat that plate of crap and if they're going to put a smile on their face and take it or if they're going to fight back enough to go back on it. I mean, anybody that's familiar with D&D, uh, mm-hmm. I play D and D. Wizards of the Coast is currently doing that with Dungeons and Dragons, and they were the OGL, all that fun stuff that's recently been going mm-hmm. on. 
their fans are fighting back and they're not, they're saying we're not going to take this. So it's like, let's just dial it back. Like why as a company do we need to try and be combative with our, with our consumers? And there's so many leaked documents that say that behind the scenes, Mm -hmm. Oh, just give it enough time. People will forget. They'll, they won't care about this. They're just throwing a fit right now. But if we just let a bit of time settle, you know, people will move on to something else to hate and we can just slide it in later and Mm -hmm. nobody will, do anything about it and eventually we'll get what we want as a company it's like guys you are multi how much hold on i i gotta (laughs) cut myself off here for a second what is worth uh, of um, wb uh, wb's net worth as of now uh is as of january 26 is 36.43 billion mm dollars warner bros discovery it's like you have more than enough money that you do not need to just just scrounge every little dollar out of your consumer, every <laughs> yeah. little penny. Like let Mortal Kombat live as the big cash money maker that it already is and can be, as we saw with the latest movie, which was blah, and it still did great. <laughs> like it still was one of the most watched films yeah. because Mortal Kombat and just like the l- latest game being the highest selling, it doesn't matter if it's the best in the series. It is a brand that will pump out money for you. So just let the developers make mm-hmm. something awesome and then charge reasonable prices for the extra stuff so they make sure it's worth everybody's time and you're still getting some money on top of it and you're making your profits. I'm not mm-hmm. saying don't make profits. Nothing like that. I'm not mm-hmm. anti-companies or businesses or anything like that. But you have 36 point whatever billion dollars. You're going to be okay. Mortal Kombat's going to be a huge profit getter. Yeah. You don't need to let the dollar get in the way of a good time when both can live happily next to each other if you mm-hmm. just respect your consumer everybody can dance together and have a good time so that right. ultimately it's not an nrs thing it's not whether i think they're capable of they're absolutely capable of making something that's fair and reasonable and fun etc mm-hmm. it's just the higher ups the suits need to just let them do their thing and not get in the way it's kind of like the wb's uh mm-hmm. the dcu and all that stuff if they just don't get in the way i'm sure these these creators can make something fun yeah and enjoyable i agree well said bro well said um i think that's a great place uh to end on so um thank you so much cyborg for coming on <laughs> yeah. that was so much fun thank you um that i'm looking w- forward to round two yeah. you let me know <laughs> Yeah, and um, 100%. I I would love to have you on again. This was a lot of fun. Uh, You okay there, bro? Yeah, (laughs) I just joked on my own spin. It's fine. (laughs) The WB is trying to kill me. They've they've heard my words. They're like, all right, let's get some kind of like, uh, you know, send some kind of sound wave in there. Yeah. Right. But um, no, that last bit was perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, But um, I have no final thoughts. That was great. Yeah, we covered it all, man. We covered it all. Um, and, and it was a solid discussion. I, I think we were fair. Mm-hmm. I think I want to I wanna harp on that more than anything is that we were fair. There's nothing... Mm-hmm. I don't live in fantasy land where we mm-hmm. should get everything for free or that there's not a cost for on yeah. their end and people got to get paid and feed yeah. their families and suits got to be able to afford their yachts and so on and so forth. I do not live in a world <laughs> where that doesn't happen. Yeah. It's just about being fair. And it I is. think we were very fair. I've, I've heard multiple times by multiple people, not just not just two or three, hundreds of people saying like, oh, these games should be free to play. These games, this should be. And I'm like, pe- people have families. People need to work. People need to earn a wage. People need right. to earn a living. And that's just the way things are. And you can never get around that. In fact, if anything, I want NRS to make as much money as oh, yeah. possible so it keeps mk alive how many exactly. franchises have died off over these years mk uh-huh. <laughs> what other franchises have lived and have been as profitable as long as mortal kombat is i mean i think they're in rare air i mean obviously you got like yeah. mario and all those other types of games that Street have still Fighter, been thriving yeah. but yeah. at this level mm-hmm. we're talking less than maybe 50 if we're talking in the gaming industry maybe mm-hmm. less than 50 that have been around as long as mk in, and mm-hmm. have been as profitable as they have I should, like i said that's the qualifier yeah. here mk is still very mainstream to this day yeah 
That's very true. It's embedded into Amer- it's embedded into Western culture, and so, that doesn't happen if no. they aren't pulling in big money. No, WB would just stifle that, and there goes MK, and no more MK for any of us. So yeah. All right. Thank you again so much for coming on. We'll definitely have you on again. This was a lot of fun. So cool. until next time, we'll see you later, bro. Thank you for having me. Take care. All right. Take care.